Good evening to all of you. A warm welcome to all friends and all the new people who have joined this meeting for the first time. On behalf of the trustees of the Roja Mutia Research Library, I'm very happy to welcome all of you. Uh, also welcome Mr. R. Balakrishnan for this uh, evening talk. Two years back, before the COVID, we had a, a very interesting talk um, on what's called as the pot route, like the silk route, spice route. We had the pot route, and that was a very important path-breaking uh, uh, research. A similar one, and he has worked for so long, after publishing his magnum opus, The Journey of Civilization. Um, which is actually which has gone for third edition and uh, already nearly some 5,000 copies have been sold. Now he has come up with another path-breaking research, which is called the Eye Lands of South Asia. And I'm sure you'll enjoy this. And it is very important. This day, today is a very important day for people who are working on uh, the Indus civilization because today is the 90th anniversary of the announcement of the discovery of the Indus Valley Civilization by Sir John Marshall. So we thought, you know, we should commemorate every year this day, which is a very important day. And uh, since then, so much of interest has been in this area, even though the script has not been deciphered yet. While the script is not deciphered, there are other sources of knowledge within the IBC corpus, but a lot of people have really not looked into the subject. That is where Mr. Balakrishnan's work becomes very, very important because he has given a new methodology to approach uh, the subject of Indus Valley civilization and its culture. He uses a very interesting methodology. Many of you know, because you would have read the book Dravida Aditalam and subsequently the journey of civilization. And uh, you would have listened to his 30 uh, lectures on Sangha Churangam, where he talks about how Sangam literature has so much of material uh, that acts as a bridge between today's Tamil Nadu and the Indus Valley civilization region. So the two geographies, we have a fantastic bridge and he provides a pair of new pair of spectacles to look at Sangam literature, to look at the Indus civilization itself. So uh, he will be presenting today on the islands, which again, you know, um, many of us would not have really looked into the subject at all. So this is a specialty of Mr. Balakishan where he looks into areas where nobody has already seen this subject and scientifically he uh, um, he presents this material for us to understand the subject so the roja mutia research library as you know the, the part of uh, the indus i'm sorry the indus research center which is part of the Ro roja mutia research library has been researching on this and uh, mr balakrishnan is heading this uh, center and uh, through this, his guidance, a lot of activities are happening. We are working with the government of Tamil Nadu, uh, especially with the state archaeology department. And we are happy that Mr. Siva, Dr. Sivanandam is here. And also the, from ASI, we have uh, Dr. Amarnath. And today, another interesting thing happened for us was you know, suddenly, uh, out of the blue, um, um, our Periwar Nindumar uh, Nayya, called and said that he wanted to see the library. And it was just a coincidence. Then I told him that we have a talk and uh, he said he will come for the talk. I want, I really warmly welcome him. Thank you, sir. So now I will not stand in between uh, Balakrishnan and you. I will invite Mr. Balakrishnan to deliver his lecture. Uh, it, it will be a long lecture. I request all of you to stay and listen and enjoy in this lecture. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. 
uh, we here in RMRL have a, a habit of starting any event dot on time and the accuracy to the minute. But then for the first time it happened that uh, we are a bit late because we got a lot of telephone calls. Uh, people saying that they are stuck in traffic. Uh, I myself was stuck in traffic while coming from home. So then we slightly relaxed uh, our uh, thing and then we are a bit late. And uh, thank you. I am happy to have Ms. Nedumaran, uh, whom uh, is my childhood, my college school days. I used to call him Anna. And then he was guiding me in my initial um, uh, kind of uh, a career in politics before. Uh, coming to the Indian Administrative Service. And it so happened today that when he gave a call that he wanted to come to the library, it's such a coincidence that he happened to be here. Uh, I'm delivering this lecture on today. Today is an important day. Uh, all of you know that it's the 98th anniversary of the uh, Indus announcement of the Indus Valley Civilization. And uh, I'll start this particular, the topic he says, uh, the islands of uh, South Asia. Uh, I think uh, last uh, about six months, I've been extensively and very intensively working and then started this particular subject about a year back. Uh, Mastro consulted many articles and many books. I ended, uh, I, towards a major part of this time, I was working on India, then it went to Indian subcontinent, ultimately ended up having a South Asia as a concept. So this uh, I, all of you know that uh, it's mother. Okay, uh, I want to uh, call this as an oil lands of South Asia. Let me get into this presentation. This presentation is in commemoration uh, to commemorate this day, 28th September, 1924. In fact, uh, this day, John Marshall, the illustrated uh, uh, weekly, he made an announcement that there existed yeah, something called Indus Valley Civilization based on his uh, basic finding from the Harappan Mohanjodhara. And this changed the whole narrative. And before this announcement, we need to know that again, this uh, presentation I want to dedicate to Thomas R. Trotman, an anthropology professor. Uh, the study which I am going to basically pres uh, present is about the kinship. In Tamil, we call it Uravu Payarhal. Uh, since the kinship and kinship terminology is going to be the basis for it, particularly the kinship study, uh, particularly the historicity, uh, the, how the historicism can be looked into from the prism of the kinship, and particularly the Dravidian kinship, the contribution of Trotman is uh, great. And then I, I, I benefited so much uh, for this talk, I felt that I must dedicate this talk to him. The fact remains that India had to wait until middle of the 19th century to realize that not all the languages in India derived from Sanskrit and that there was a major family of Dravidian languages spoken in the country. You believe it, middle of 19th century, before Ellis and before Caldwell, nobody was even calling this as a linguistic family. The terminology Dravidian, uh, though it was used Dravid word, but in the linguistics context as a linguistic family, it was a phenomenal finding and the kinship terminology played a role in it. Then world had to wait till 1924 for John Marshall to announce there was an Indus Valley civilization and then that pre-existed, it was a pre-Aryan in character and non-Aryan character. And then the pre-Aryan and non-Aryan India was not that uncivilized the, the people like to project at that particular point of time. It was a great urban civilization. I really shudder to think about the probable narrative of the Indian past in the absence of the Indus Valley civilization and the corpus of Sangam Tamil literature. I consciously make this statement. I have been a lost of so many years and presenting a kind of a position then Sangam literature is a bridge that connects the great Indus Valley civilization and the Tamil antiquity. And then it helps us to travel both in space and time and the spatial temporal gap between the Harappan, Mohanjodharan and the Indus Valley civilization and what we call uh, in Sangam age. So there is a gap in space because people say that it is stopped at Gujarat and Maharashtra 
Lothal. And then people say that you are in Kiladi, you are in Adichanalur, you are in Sivagalai. There is a lot of gap in between. People say that it is a 6th, 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, that is 1900 BC, the civilization collapsed or declined. So how to bridge that particular space and time? Then I found that the Sangam literature is the key to open that. The Sangam literature contains so much of carried forward memories. And if at all, there is one literature in this continent exists, which can be called as a software for the Indus Valley civilization. If the Indus Valley civilization brick and mortar and the, all the material, if it's called the hardware of the Indus Valley civilization, the software of the Indus Valley civilization is Sangam literature because no other literature in India talk about an urban life, talked about the maritime life, talked about the mother goddess centric, feminine centric uh, literature, the lifestyle which matches the Indus Valley civilization. That is the reason I am thinking the Indo India's past cannot be forget about Tamil past. I am telling Indian subcontinental past, South Asian past cannot be reconstructed without Sangam literature. Because Sangam literature is the only literature which talks about the entire geographical variety of the Indian subcontinent, including the desert where a camel was eating a bone. And the only literature which reported that is the Sangam literature. And then the objective of this study, I would like to define, to take a deep anthropological an historical perspective of the kinship system and kinship terms of South Asia with particular reference to the mother word I and place an argument that the people who lived in Indus Valley civilization were indeed Dravidian in language. This is the objective of this talk. And I cannot have a better date or a better day than this. What are the oil lands? Why do I call is an oil land? We say that uh, is a, uh, so India in English and Bharat was in thing and all Bharatam or Tamil Nadu, so many terminologies. Why I want to introduce or call something called oil land. The lands in which kinship terms like I, Amma are used to denote mother and particularly with the kinship system. It is not about the terminology. I am not talking about the vocabulary alone. I am not talking about the lexim, lexical items alone. I am talking about the marriage system. That means the kinship system. That means mother and particularly with the kinship system that gives preference to the cross-cousin marriage. Cross-cousin marriage. The system of Mary, uh, uh, Mama, Punnu, Mama, Payan, Attai Punnu, Attai Punnu, that kind of cross-cousin uh, marriage in the present, probably in the past, are both. The current, instead of, in spite of the current linguistic affiliation of the people living there, notwithstanding. That means in a particular place, today the Dravidian language may not be spoken, maybe in Gujarat. And some places, uh, it's maybe in Maharashtra. And we will prove that even in a place where the Dravidian languages are not currently spoken, in terms of the kinship system and kinship terminology, it still continue to be Dravidian. That is the, that is the, uh, the test of the pudding today I am trying to put before you. Such regions are identified with approximate contours, sort of a hypothetical polygon, and euphemistically called as oil lands by this researcher. Something comparable with the notional tag cavity complex of IVC used by this researcher earlier. In 2010, in Coimbatore uh, World Tamil Classic Tamil Conference, when I made an announcement about Kurtkai Vanji Tundi Valaham, KVT complex, I had a, almost worked on that concept for more than eight years, from 2002 to 2010, and confirmed it to various case studies. I purposely selected this terminology, KVT complex, because Kurtkai Vanji Tundi, without these names, you cannot reconstruct Tamil past. But this terminology is a Greek and Latin for Sanskrit or any other language in this country. So something has to be so unique and so many, nobody else can claim ownership for that. Such a kind of tag I wanted to give it, KVT complex. Today, it has become a part of the narrative and it has already got into the textbooks. I'm very happy to uh, say this. The textbook uh, joint director is very much here, uh, Dr. Sankar Saravanan. And then it's a part of the narrative right now, today. So I am sure that the island is going to be one such term. I am very, very confident about that. And uh, this is a Dravidian etymological dictionary. 
item number 364. Kindly have a look at it. This particular item 364, it's about the term called IE. In Tamil, first thing, TA Tamil, I, I, Yai, Nyai. That means Yayum, Nyayum, Arakiro. Yai means my mother, Nyai means your mother. I mean mother. I, I, Yai, Nyai. You see that you should have to keep it in mind. Normally in Tamil, the Yakaram and A, Ya and A will get become interchangeable. Yanai, Anai. Yadu, Adu. Yaru, Aru. Yandu, Andu. Like this, it becomes, there is a kind of a, a grammar given by Tulha Pier himself. How the interchangeability of Ya and A happens. Tulha Pier himself is prescribing grammar for it. So we have to take a, a Yai and I as one and same. And then also Achal, Ayal, Nyai, and Kurundokai, and Thai. Thai is a, all of you know that Thai. Thayer, Thai mai, Thai men mean motherhood. In Malayalam, Achi, in Toda language, it's called Toi. Kannada, Ai, Kodaku, Thai, Tulu, Thai, Telugu, Thai, Kolami, Ai, Naiki language, Aima, Aika, Parji, Ayal. This Gadaba, I have been to these areas in Korapur district of uh, Orissa, where the Ullari Gadaba and Silur Gadaba, people call Aya. It's a woman, a small Aya mother. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday only Dr. Israel, M. Israel, who was a linguistics professor in Madurai Kambara University, who had done an extensive study in this area in the Kuvi language, we lost him. And then Bundi language, I have been to this area in Bastar and the bordering area of Orissa, Yayal. The terminology you find in Sangam literature, I have been talking about this. There are more than about 280 villages in Bastar area, which ends with a name called Nod. Their Nod means village. Their Yai means mother. Yayum, not even I. And then Yayo, Ayal. Konda, Aya. Pengo, Aya. Mando, Aya. Kui, Ayilal, Aja. And Kuvi, Ia, Aya. And then Kruk, Kruk is a language spoken uh, by the people called Oran. They live in the Jharkhand and the northern part, northwestern part of Orissa. In their language also, Ayo is mother. We have to be very, very important. It is in the North India. It is in the Jharkhand. And then Malto, this Malto area, I have been there. It's a place called Sundar Pahad uh, in the Bihar Jharkhand area. There the Malto people call is Aya, my mother, I mother. Mind it, in the Sri Lanka, Singhalese language, the Singhalese is supposed to be an Indo-Aryan language. You know that the, the long, the traditional, the give and take and the conflicts and confrontation between the Tamils and Singhalese, where you have to keep it in mind. And Tamil term I is the mother in the Singhalese language. In Gujarati, it is the I mother in marathi i is mother and then i am quoting here is a c dial comparative dictionary of the indo aryan languages by turner that means the earlier i am showing that uh, dravidian etymological dictionary by the Baro and emano and here is a c dial by the turner where he compares the i and yai with the uh, Sindh, singhalese marathi gujarati kind of indo aryan terminology so that it, it becomes the cross family that means this term crosses the linguistic family. We will see how it happened. Then Amma, Amma, I, I am not going to explain much about it. Everybody knows that uh, the entire, what I am trying to say that the entire length of the Dravidian family, a lot of people are really feeling confused. And nowadays we're talking about the terminologies like a Dravidian become so much people worked up about it. Uh, Tamil versus Dravidian and all, they are very, very Ill, Ill informed because you cannot talk about the linguistic family without using this particular term. I am talking about the people who live in the Pakistan, Palichistan area, Brahui, Malto, Bihar, and the people who live in the Gujarat borders. When we talk about the interesting, this is the way the international research community defined the linguistic family and also the kinship terminology. It is known as Dravidian kinship. Dravidian kinship is a much used word in the kinship studies. One of the best kinship system they talk about it. Then 
imagine from the tamil where you come kodagu and the south in south uh, dravidian languages it's more in the amma mind it in sangam literature amma is never called amma it is amma there is a term is that otherwise annai but it's amma like that calling was not there virtual and akka in the sea dial comparative dictionary of uh, indo aryan languages in dravidian akka means sister elder sister whereas in the uh, in the some languages like in the kashmiri side prakrit and it is a prakrit sister sister is called prakrit is a, you can understand and marathi is an akka is a elder sister and then in the kashmiri language the akka is a mother and then again it has been clearly pointed out by the scholars it is borrowed from the dravidian and then go there and uh, tulu and uh, amma where it goes and lands here you see this one you have to see this particular thing why i put this one start from here is in kanyakumari this is in palichistan and pakistan in the indus valley civilization same is the i and things that is reason i put the whole thing once you connect this to end and then including the kuvi and the brahui we have to nothing else to speak about the linguistic family it is the length and breadth of this country and compare with compare this with the sanskrit tamil ammam and again i am telling you dd and c dial the scholars have pointed out the sanskrit term amba which is says it which is the rigveda amba and then in the post vedic literature and vedic literature the amba itself by the scholars have been clearly pointed out it's a borrowed comparable with the ammam and ambal or amman of the tamil because i will explain that why amba or ambal cannot be a indo european or indo aryan language it is bound to be a dravidian or a tamil language i will explain that avvai avvai everybody knows that again another term avvai is a mother old woman and then kodagu thoda gadava avve is a old man old woman gondi avva is a mother avvi is a mother and then mind see it from the tamil to kui where i i live in uh, orissa and kubi avva is mother and the entire length compare that with the prakrit avva is mother marathi avva avaji term of courtesy in addressing a sudra woman you you will call a mata pita mata pita is not there in sangam literature at all neither mata nor pita because that is a matru and pitru and where i say the prakriti it gets into the avva as a mother in the later stage it gets a slight color that uh, the terminology used by the people considered to be non aryan or the some other uh, lower strata of the uh, four grade varna system and the sudra women uh, ca- calling them with a the courtesy is used we use word addressing this i am not telling turner is telling compared to the cdl and ded okay then ralph yel turner he again this we spoke about the based on dravidian now i am going to deal with the same terminology based on indo aryan a comparative dictionary of indo aryan ralph yel turner the entry number 997 i mean mother can you believe that and also aunt probably a nursery word there is a language called i will show it to the map the meli it is uh, somewhere in the dharistan that is a border beyond afghanistan pakistan and that is the border i have been talking about in the context of my kvt complex where i had located earlier the place states like adiyaman karigalan pumbugar kanagi kind of name seran cholan pandian maran baludi this kind of name beyond that when you try to reconstruct tamil pods it is a continuing civilization it is continue to live for the thousands of year mind it this dameli is an indo aryan language that mean today i am talking to in english am i an english man and had i not gone to the college i studied tamil later on i learnt in english some of my batchmates have come here i was not even knowing proper english when i got into the service now i am talking to in english i am not become an english man so over a period of time now i am living in orissa i speak good oriya and my granddaughter speaks better oriya than me so the the fact remains that over a period of time you will switch language but you don't uh, your ethnic thing is not changed your character is not changed your system is not changed so here the dameli is a indo aryan language probably can you imagine where this uh, i is a mother would have come 
பர்டிகுலர்லி இ த யா இன் சங்கம் லிட்ரேச்சர் யாய் யாயும் யாயும் ஆராகியரோ கிராண்ட் மதர் தெர் இஸ் அ லாங்குவேஜ் கால் பாஷை இஸ் அன் ஆய் இஸ் அ மதர் இட் இஸ் இன் தி ஈஸ்டர்ன் இரானியன் Iranian Pakistan Afghanistan border where i we always uh, uh, we talk about the uh, in this context how the iranian farmers and hunter gatherers uh, travel and all this is an area the language is indo uh, european family or you can say indo iranian family but the word is oi which is dravidian oi it happen there is a there is a language called kalasa in that area spoken aya is mother basarik is a dardic language a dardic is that and they are called in the in the early sanskrit mm-hmm. literature these people are called dardic and that's a language is a, a called ea and sindhi you know that in the sindhu area there is a community called sindhi community they are a trader community like our chettias like parsi there is a sindhi community they live in pakistan area and indian area for the in their term ai is mother allave anti ant and senior female relative nepali in nepali area not many people know that there is a dravidian language spoken by few people it not necessarily that dravidian the current speakers have given this terminology but this terminology has been borrowed deep in the past in the nepali language i is a wife or a woman assamis i is a mother and also small pox and the tamil is a one language which is called as a ammai noi the small pox is a con- con- connected with a mother sitala devi sitala mandal it's basically ammai it's a small box or i i the affectionate bengali i is a mother and oriya i is a mother's mother gujarati i is a mother grandmother mind it gujarati when when i say that i is a mother or mother's mother grandmother it does not mean that they don't use the word mata ma they may use the ma ma ta and currently because they switched over gujarati has become indo aryan language but the question is that the area which has become indo aryan how this particular terminology still continue to be used by the group of people located in the saurashtra kutch and this particular area uh, how they continue to use the word i who are they we are going to analyze that for inman single is mind it again what happened in orissa and what happened in bengal side in bihar side will happen in singalese most of the singalese people travel from that part of the country and i don't think this is the two possibility either they came and mingled with the the uh, pre existing naturally certainly pre existing tamil the, the term for the mother continued or they even when they came from that area they had already acquired that term because they belong to the ai group in the like in orissa or the jharkhand area either way i think probably the dna studies and other studies may throw a light in the future but the unfortunately this kind of studies uh, no one really steps in and uh, thanks to uh, sir john morsel uh, we are talking a serious topic like this let me tell you confidently if only one place or one city where the indus valley civilization being seriously talked that is tamil nadu nowhere else the way we have a creative tension about our past the way we have a tension about what is sangam literature how it happened what is our past lemuria continent where we came from kumari kodu pagriliyaru panmalai adukkam all this concept we have a creative tension about indus valley civilization nobody is bothered about the indus valley civilization before the announcement also after the announcement also because right now we are coming with the new and new evidence and claim that indus is our own then people now started talking about the harappan and the mohenjodara little bit seriously and then but they would like to have a different name for it and then this is uh, in the in the singalese and even in the uh, sindhi language uh, there is a place called kachi dialect in of sindhi uh, the kachi area is my is mother and west pahadi is a language is in the uttarakhand area where i have located so many places that is an area where i had located pakhrul is a small river and kumari is a village and hill can you imagine that kumari and pakhrul and that is an area i is the mother we need to think about that a kabbar it then again avva i told i had introduced avva is a dravidian term now i am introducing avva as a indo aryan term in prakrit avva mean mother marathi avva and then amba mean mother in rigveda 
compared with Ambiga, Vajasnedi, Samhida, and Panini grammar, it talks about the uh, Ambada, and Daritriya Samhida, it talks about I. It gets into the Pali language. Uh, it is uh, Amba, Amma, Amma is mother in Pali. Mind it, Pali is the language of Buddhism and kind of thing. And uh, Buddhism, Jainism in that particular area of the Eastern India, we have to keep it in mind. It happens only in the Eastern India. This Eastern Indian area, Magadha area, which is consisting of the Magad area of the Bihar, was considered almost untouchable by the what is called the Arya Rastra. I have seen the literature, the Dharma Shastras, which is telling that people who are living in the Arya Desa, Arya Varsa, should not visit places like Anga, Vanga, Kalinga. First, there is a prohibition. After subsequently, the prohibition little relaxed. If you have to go to a, some kind of a sacred places or to take bath in sacred water, you may go, but when you come back to the Arya Rashtra, you have to go through some kind of rituals to re-induct yourself. This I have pointed out in many of my research paper about the Odisha and pointed out that the reconstruction of the past, we have to keep it in mind. The greatest religions of the world which is the very organized religion, first missionary-based religion, Buddhism, Jainism, come there, the greatest empire, the second urbanization, the historic period, Maurya comes there, and uh, Ajada Satru, Bimbisara, there is a studies which has been made by Ajada Satru, married a cross cousin marriage, and uh, Mama, Mere, Mama Punnu marriage type of thing, and uh, even people have done study about the uh, Lord Krishna's marriage system and all. So I want to point out that the area which was neglected, considered to be low bond, and that is the area greatest things have happened. Whether it's a Buddhism or Jainism or the greatest Magatha empire, all this has happened in that area. Almost about, uh, I think that uh, my friend Daman here is here. I think that from that region, uh, many Tirthankaras of the Jain came from that region only. Very few from the Western India. So then, Tamil Akkai, Akka, mother, a costly dialect of West Pahadi, Ragrit, and then Marathi. So I will rush to the discussion. Now, we have to understand what is a language family, linguistic family. Have a look at it. Have a look at this particular um, tree. It's a linguistic tree. It's a language tree. You will see, this is called the PIE. Proto-Indo-European. Any language we, before becoming as a branches of a tree, what is the root? Like say we call it a Proto-Dravidian. That means in Tamil it's a Tul Dravidam. Then it's a Proto-Indo-European. Samaskritam, Samas Sanskrit, a language which is constructed, it is basically belongs to what is known as Indo-Aryan. In that one, what is the literary language is called Sanskrit, and the vocal colloquial language is called Prakrit. And then it belongs to the Indo-Iranian. Before that, it was Indo-Iranian. You see the, how the tree is going. Proto-Indo-European. It goes to this side and to the ancient Greek. Then here see Armenian, Greek, Italian, French, Catalan, Spanish, Portuguese, Irish, Scottish, English, Dutch, German. And then uh, Old Irish, Proto-Germanic. It, it, it is going like this. From Proto-Indo-European, it a branch will go, it will become an ancient Greek. And here there is a branch, will become a Latin. From here, all this uh, Portuguese, Spanish come. Here's a Germanic language come, Old Irish, and then modern Proto-Germanic. From there, it goes to the German. If you really look at it, all the Slavic, Proto-Slavic, then you will see that the ultimate word is that matter. Even today in English, we call it a mother. In Samaskaradam, it is Matru, Matru Bhumi, ma Matru. So that means this terminology from this side is goes to the Western world. Here it's become the Proto-Indo-Iranian. And then Old Persian. Here is a Sanskrit. Then from here, Old Persian, this side is a, it goes that Proto-Slavic, Pasto, Bulgarian, Russian. And then here is the Kurdish, Kashmiri, Hindi, Urdu, Marathi. And I told you, I told you in Marathi and Gujarati, I is a mother, but Ma also mother. Because it, uh, many people will say Mata and uh, all the Amman temple will be called Mata Mandir and all these things. We will talk about it. So here, the Pali, Prakrit, Maya, Punjabi, Ma, Bihari, Ma, Uriya also, Ma, Ma, Mother. Single is also Ma, Va, Ma, Mother, I also continues. There are areas where 
ஒரு பியூர்லி ஒன்லி மதர் மா டெர்மினாலஜி இஸ் யூஸ்ட் தெர் ஆர் சர்டன் ஏரியா தி ஆய் டெர்மினாலஜி இஸ் யூஸ் தெர் ஆர் சர்டன் ஏரியா போத் ஆர் யூஸ்ட் தென் வீட் நோ தட் ஹூ யூசஸ் ஆய் வென் இட் பிகம் மா ஆர் மாத்தா ஸோ தென் then we need to understand so how it happen and when it happen so i will take you to t baro and most of the time i quote the uh, the international scholars who have no personal ox to grind otherwise you will end up uh, making some people make a emotional claim about the linguistic affinity when we talk about the language every language is great every linguistic family is fine very good so we need to yadu mure yavarum kelir there is nothing Uh, yeah, this thing about it we talk about an academic thing from the linguistics point of view perspective and then these people are the well reputed international scholars who have given up they have given their life 40 years and 50 years that kind of scholarship you won't find in universities here i am telling you i am very very clear about it and their scholars only contributed to the understanding of the dravidian understanding of the languages in india and that is the reason we are presenting and submitting and celebrating people like uh, trotman and people like uh, baro and yamuno without them we would not have got got to know what we are so here the baro clearly says that dravidian loan words in sanskrit somebody may ask me in sanskrit samaskrit in the sangam literature you say that uh, don't you think that there are some sanskrit word the answer is yes even people say that even tulgapiyam them some sanskrit word is sir answer is yes because we are putting that in the time frame and vadasur kilavi vada eluthu origi eluthodum sundra pol sollagame very clear thisai chol vada sol these are the terminologies used in the northern words northern language and the kind of dialects everything tulgapiyam covers we are not talking about that time frame there are say, in sanskrit samask in sangam literature the loan words from the sanskrit are very less particularly in tamil the loan words from samaskritam is very less compared with the telugu and the malayalam is nothing but tamil and sanskrit and then kannada kind of language tamil has got a very minimum particularly in the in the language like sangam sangam literature in sangam literature there is no terminology called manu there is some no terminology is called madhu there is no terminology called pita so that mean you have to understand that that is a slightly in the earliest layer then the baro says that the most important source of the foreign element in sanskrit vocabulary vocabulary is to be found in the dravidian languages he says the language which gave loan words to the sanskrit is essentially dravidian some austro asiatic words also there but mostly dravidian majority of the loan words are post vedic a small nucleus of dravidian loan words already found in rigveda rigveda is the earliest veda then rig yajur sama adarvana then comes to the brahmana literature and other literatures are coming and early sanskrit panini and classical literature and he says small nucleus particularly what type of word the terms associated with the agriculture the terms associated with the household and settled life are borrowed from uh, the language of the uh, basically dravidian for example ulukala ulukala mean now what we call in tamil ulakai ural and ulakai the mortar and pestle it is called ulukala ulakai and the kunda we say that kundum kuliyumaga irukirade abingala kundum kuliyuma irukna pallam and the pallam kundu kundu irade the kunda is a hole in the ground pit mayura again it's a pick up word and bala it's a strength valu these are the few example i'm telling bilva bilva i think ergul marmilos the tree will be kind of thing these are the few terminologies i am quoting which got into rigveda so many words that came into the later on in the panini and other areas i am talking about rigveda vast majority of dravidian loan words appear in early classical language being first recorded in panini patanjali mahabharata and saudasura majority also appear in the pali literature 500 bc to 300 bc active borrowing took place between late vedic period and the formation of the classical language this is what baro says okay where did this loan took place what is the geographical location where this early sanskrit rigveda borrowed from the dravidian language did the people of the rigveda met some tamilian guy near chennai or madurai and borrowed the word which is not a fact he says not in dravidian south this borrowal took place in the north india 
there were no intensive contacts before Mayura, Maurya period, and by that time, majority of the borrowing had taken place. In Sangam literature, we call about the Vamba Maurya. There is a terminology a reference to Nanda. There is a reference, a reference to the Gangai. There is something about the reference to Pataliputra, this kind of terminology, but uh, there is nowhere. Arya Padakadanda Nedinjalin is there, but there is no, then it is also mentioned that uh, the, in a place called Vallam, there was a fight between the Tamil uh, basically chieftains and the Aryans, Arya Alarat Taki. He said, but where is the Vallam in war near Tanjavur? That Vallam, no, not necessarily. So, where he crossed it. So, because in the historic document, there is no fight took place actually in Tamil Nadu. So, then where it took place, where the interface took place, where the borrowal took place. The, if the influence took place in the central Gangetic Plains and the classical Madhya Desa, the assumption that the pre aryan population of this area contained a considerable element of Dravidian speakers would best account for the Dravidian words in Sanskrit. That's what T. Burrow, after an excellent research, he says. The Dravidian words in Rig Veda attest the presence of Dravidian in northwestern India at that period. Northwestern India. Because Rig Vedic, I'm telling you, let me tell you, Adarvana Veda, by the time Adarvana Veda is written, a lot of medicine and magic connected with the tribal population gets into Adarvana Veda. Yajur Veda, it talks about so many rituals. And there is again two types of Yajur Veda, and Krishna Yajur Veda and Sukhila Yajur Veda. One type of Yajur Veda is followed only in the south. And uh, thing and all. Then again, by that time, the pottery is getting included. And I will tell, talk about that. It's a Yajur Veda subsequently. But the Rig Vedic area is a morally in the upper Gangetic plain. Not even Ganga is a very hardly uh, celebrated as a great river. Ganga is hardly mentioned. There is no Krishna, no Ram. So Rigvedic is a very earliest layer. In that layer itself, a Dravidian word got into mean which area of north? That is, the borough says it's a northwestern India. Mm -hmm. And Brahui in Palichistan mm -hmm. remains as the modern representative of the northwestern Dravidian. The Dravidian languages like Kuruk and Malto are preserved even now in northern India as the remnant of the past. I have visited I could not visit the uh, Pakistan, though I had a, a plan to go. I was uh, promised to be invited by the Pakistan uh, Election Commission when I was working as a Deputy Election Commissioner. Unfortunately, I fell ill and uh, I could not really make a trip. I hope that in future, some point of time, I'll be able to go. But the rest of the Dravidian languages, like uh, Malto speakers and Kruk speakers, almost all of the Dravidian speakers in India, except Brahui, I have personally met. And then, and then the, again, we have spoken about mother. And if you speak about mother, and if you talk about the Indo-Aryan mother and the I kind of thing, how will you not talk about the Paul? So Paul has got a animal milk and also Thai Paul. It's basically, it's something connected with the motherhood and the feeding. And the Tamil Paul milk, milky juice of prawns. I'm telling you, Kali Paul, Thai Paul, Matu Paul, Artu Paul, Paul milk, vegetable milk. So it goes like this, and Gondi, mind it, let me tell you, in Brahui, I am always worried about Brahui, because I am an Indus researcher. Okay, my eye is always looking for what happens in Brahui. It's a pal, milky juices or a sap of plant, like a Kali pal. You see that a Kali pal, what is it? Like that in the science of, compared with this Sanskrit lexicon, palana, milk of cow, newly called. Baro, and, and other people are comparing this Palana. Palana, Palana mean, Palana mean to even nursing. That Paul comes from the nursing milk of cow newly called. This is the way this Sanskrit Baroyal, the scholars are talking about. Palana, protecting, nourishing, a recently called cow. Pali, Palana, keeping going, protection. Asokan is a Asokan Bra Brahmi uh, inscription. In the language of the inscription of Asoka, Palanam, Prakrit, Palna, Bengali, Palan, Odia, Palana. This is the way it goes to Kungani in Singhalese, Palna in protection. Okay, now this is the core Indo European root. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I say the Hermel, I don't know how anybody uh, who can say that pronounce it probably. This is the word you can say that uh, I don't want to venture into it. This is the meaning to milk. 
பால் கறக்கிறது டூ மில்க் மீன் திஸ் இஸ் கம் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் புரோட்டோயின் கோர் இண்டோ யூரோப்பியன் ரூட் வைட் ஸ்பிரட் யூரோப்பியன் ரூட் நாட் அட்டஸ்டட் இன் இண்டோ ஈரோனியன் நார் இன் அனோட்டாலியன் it is not attested in indo iranian mean it will not be attested in indo aryan also if it is not in attested in indo aryan it will not be attested in sanskrit prakrit pali so here the proto indo european root pithic pa root proto indo which is dehi the to suck the mother's milk and the post anatolian innovation core indo european rate the milk comes that here you see the daughter in in hindi and all normally you say the dud dud mean is a milk and it comes from the proto indo european called the teat the teat breast then the female female child then is sucking and milking is this is a way it goes that there is no milk word which is which can be traced to the proto indo european this is a, a milk and indo europeans a study by laren sagart romain garnier in naples in 2016 this article was published and then okay you talked about mother you talked about the milk then what is the act of uh, giving birth the indra the word which is often used in sangam literature indra pulidir peruduvakkum tanmaganai chaandron ena ketta thai tirukural the indra endra this terminology is a very very important terminology look at it in dravidian tamil to bear bring forth produce yield and then young one brought forth eenugal adu vand that could be a animal giving birth or a human giving birth or giving birth to thing eenuga malayalam kota thoda thoda is a again very much a buffalo related culture which is that the yeen is to bear there are the todas buffaloes and buffaloes and todas ears you cannot separate from each other look at the terminology buffalo within a month of calving kannada telugu parji let me take you again to the brahmi which i am interested because of the indus valley meaning is to lamb kid foal calf so you compare that terminology next day, then if you what we spoke finally when we come to that in the indian map you find uh, this kind of uh, context you will find uh, there is a dravidian kinship system dravidian kinship terminology which is completely the dravidian south and the dravidian sri lanka which is even got into the singalese and there is something called frontier zone the frontier zone is the maharashtra and gujarat gujarat and maharashtra today is an indo aryan language but there are communities in biga in gujarat and maharashtra who speak an indo aryan language but their kinship system is cross caste in marriage their terminology is a dominant terminology there are a tribe which will come to that which is indo aryan speaking tribe their tribals this is community that is tribe bills we will talk about it their system is cross caste in marriage their the name of the tribe itself dravidian they have a kinship terminology which is dravidian so this is the frontier area and bilala will come in this area this is now what we call as an indo aryan so if you say that indo aryan there is a something called buffer zone frontier zone it is a pure dravidian and the dravidian sri lanka and then this we are going to talk about this particular tension what happened here historically and then my interest here why i map is important for all of us for all of us to know the truth or bit of uh, you have to bear with me this talk is going to be slightly uh, lengthy because uh, i why i chose to speak this in english i would have been far more comfortable talking in tamil but then uh, most of the time when i work 6 months or one year a particular article i would like to convert that into a uh, journal uh, particularly our industry research center bulletin it will come as an article very soon so it makes sense for me to take my notes and uh, uh, construct my ideas in english probably i might translate in tamil later on like the way i did joc book and uh, look at it many people they don't even put uh, i think amarnath ramakrishnan is here and he has worked in that area also people normally put the orbit of the indus valley civilization they will stop here lothal desalpur and this uh, so many indus sites are there uh, dolavira in the gujarat and there is a place called daimabad 
this is in the Maharashtra. I think uh, Amarnath, you worked in that area, na? Yeah, Rakhi Gadi. You worked in Rakhi Gadi. So this Daimabad, I got this map made and putting the same color. They will come with the technology. It's a, a post Harappan, pre Harappan, mature Harappan, late Harappan, and all. All fine. But the fact remains that in Daimabad also horse was not found. In Daimabad also in the bronze cart, spoke wheel is not there. Is a disc wheel is there. And Daimabad also on out and out, it is absolutely a continuity of the Harappan. If we talk about the Kiladi and talk about the Mohanjadara and Harappa's continuity and the graffiti, why not Daimabad? So I have put that same color because I would like to call it a proven orbit of the Indus Valley civilization, whether somebody likes it or not. But the fact remains that. So then we will, because why it is not come down further south? Because we have not dug much. We went this way because you we were digging and looking for something else. Okay. Then I am going to show one map. When I announced the Kurkai Vanji Tundi complex, the person who questioned me, nobody else, myself. Eight years I toiled with that sleepless. I used to think that am I talking sense? Am I going to say something which is a, a very out of the blue? And uh, can I prove it? So did a case study of uh, Parsis, case study of Europeans traveling to uh, Americas, African going to America, Uruba tribes reaching to the West Indies, and so many global you, Jews uh, traveling from the Palestine to elsewhere, elsewhere to uh, back to Israel. And then when the Jews moved from the Poland to Russia and back from Russia to Poland, all these case studies I have done, eight years I have not written any article about it. Those studies, I did it only to convince myself that Kurkai Vanji Tundi complex is approvable and I am talking sense. So at that time, I had a question. When I spoke this much, it's such a big tree, it, uh, hills are the kind of mountain system in the entire country is Himalaya. You must know that in Sangam literature, one mountain system or one mountain spoken maximum time is Himalayas, not others. Not even Pudigai. Himalaya is maximum time mentioned. And then the Sangam Tamil is so much obsessed about that Himalaya. Ariyar Tundriya, Ariyar Tundriya Himayam, Ariyar Tundriya Perisa Himayam. That means the, the Himayam from where the Aryans appeared. Tundriya, Ariyar Tundriya Perisa Himayam. And then the Tamils are so obsessed for some psychological, collective psychological reason. A guy is standing in Madurai. And, uh, and then near Tirupurangundram, he says, Tirupurang Parangundram Imayam Nigarkum. Can you imagine that? On what basis one will say that Parangundram Imayam Nigarkum? We will come about the Ayakudi also. He says, yes, this is Tirupurangundram, but this is equal to Himalaya. He will keep on telling the Pandian went and press, uh, inscribed uh, uh, fish, and the Chera went and uh, inscribed the bow, and then Chola went and inscribed tiger. There is an obsession. Again and again, there is a, some connection with the North and South and the Aryan and Tamil, a binary, and the inscribing the symbols and telling a hill near Madurai is equal to Himalaya. So with keeping this in mind, if this is a, a mountain system, what those mountains are called, then you go on Google for it. I searched the entire Himalayan system, not even single Giri. Giri mean. Uh, Saptagiri type of thing is in, 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 in Hindi or Sanskrit, it is a thing. There is a only one place called Parvat, like from where the Parvati comes, Malay, Mahal, Parvati. Parvat is one. And see that how many Malay I had located. Malay, Modu, Varai, Kundru, Kodu. This, this is a thing I think I had given the uh, latitude of that and so many Malay. Not even in Tamil Nadu, you may get a Kurmi on Malay, you may get a Pudhiyay Malay, you may get a Tirupuramundra Malay, you can say Senni Malay. All this Malay, you will get it. But Malay alone is not a Malay in Tamil Nadu. Because that it's so much of Malay, you have to differentiate one Malay from other Malay. But the only place where that word is getting a very, very uh, ancient, then that is where the mono word place names will come. Where the Malay will be just called Malay. Kundru will be just called Kundru. 
then parangundru sengundram everything will come so when we located this look at the other map i will not this map you must have often see it is a, even if you go to google then this map often appears the cavity complex where the korkai murugan tittan tidiyan tondri kundru malli urai tidiyan vanji killi yal vanni yal and vanni can you imagine that and then the entire thing kachi puhar totti totti is a, all these hills and the mountain system mentioned in sangam literature the associated with the mountain leaders the hill leaders and the chieftains all these terminologies the part of the indus valley and palichistan kirtar mountains and the sulaiman hills this is my finding which i had announced in 2010 then india then i am coming to the kinship study india the study of kinship terminology thomas trotman uh, to whom i have i am dedicating this talk he says language changes its vocab this is a cell phone the suddenly cell phone has come to my vocabulary then some people peer written will say is alai pesi then is a kai pesi then uh, somebody will say that no no don't tell mobile okay many people say mobile mobile enga vacha so that mean the terminology changes new terminology come sometime thing and all i'm telling you when i was a student uh, in the school varalaru uh, was called sarutram and nilaviyal or puviyal was called bhugolam and then my katturai note that mean my uh, what is called composition note or what katturai note it was called vyasa note katturai mean vyasam when i was studying there was a period called katturai period was called vyasam palgalai kalagam was the sarva kala salai tunai vendar was the uba atyakshagar and then last 30 years again people bound back and say would introduce the new terminology uh, madhu was uh, when i was working in dinamani and uh, in my own newspaper i used to write uh, pengal or magalir somebody will write stri or madhu and bas modi madhu kayam and uh, bas modi stri maranam uh, this are the thing was happening i am telling about the early 80s and 70s so language changes its vocabulary not only but also modifies its grammatical structure in the progress of ages dravidian has influenced the grammar of the sanskrit will you know that the retroflex and other sounds and a, a syntax system there is an influence of dravidian in the grammatical structure itself and thus eluding the inquiries which philologists have pressed into answer but till the called worlds and the elites of the world came and told we were believing that uh, the, the all the languages flowing from one language or we were believing at the best people came and made a compromise and then then sanskrit came from the one side of the udukai of sivan the other side of the udukai tamil came so this is what we were talking during the medieval period so now we are talking science so then relationship then he says but a system of relationship once matured and brought into operation is in the nature of things that means system of relationship in amma appa thai thandai manavi kanavan kulandai petro apra thai mama this kind of relationship once matured and brought into operation is in the nature of things more unchangeable than language language may change but the kinship system will not change because that is a part of your culture it's a, it's the way you get married and it is determined by geography by your economics your cultural your thing let me tell you the whole how the marriage system started in the universal thing we will talk about that not in the names of not in the names employed as a vocabulary of the relationship even the kinship vocabulary may change in some places akka may be called mother another place it will be called sister another place will be i will be called mother another place it will be called grandmother but even that may change but the relationship vocabulary of thing for this are mutable but in the ideas which underlie the system itself whether you are in the parallel cousin marriage permitted or not question yes or no in the islamic religion is permitted cross cousin marriage permitted or not in dravidian it's permitted including south indian brahmins you have to keep one thing in mind people there is a there is a concept called panch dravida brahmins where the gujarat brahmins kurjara brahmins malava brahmins andhra and the dravida brahmin dravida mean they mean tamil brahmin and then kannada brahmins at that time malayalam was not separately called it is called panch dravida and mind it you know what is the reason 
in the south indian brahmin they will marry a maternal uncle thai mama kalyanam and then attai ponnu mama ponnu this cross cousin wedding which will not take place in gangetic plains so that is reason the north indian brahmins will not accept the south indian brahmins marriage system so that mean imagine in this particular location the marriage system establishes itself it doesn't change and the terminology doesn't change so louis h morgan quoted by thomas stratman kinship terminology as an anthropological object is located deep in the heart of a language deep in the heart of the language it is it's not a glass it is not a cell phone the kinship terminology is deep inside your artery kinship terms and words of body parts are equally primitive kan in brahmi also it is a kan the all the dravidian language is kan kai kal muku this kind of terminology because it doesn't change your your kan doesn't change your mother doesn't change so then people say kinship terms and words of body parts are equally primitive francis ellis 1816 unfortunately he died very young and alexander d campbell 1816 pointed out similarity in poor vocabulary among the south indian languages but different from that of sanskrit this is the beginning of the dawn of the understanding they said that a, a, we call kai he will say sei then somebody say he will tell sevi then in the he will tell in the karnataka fellow may say that kevi so kevi kivi that kind of thing sagara kakara matram and all these things so then they pointed out this campbell and the ellis pointed out the south indian language is having the same terminology when they made the core vocabulary kinship vocabulary is explicitly part of that proof they pointed out to mother uh, all tandai all this terminology and campbell listed words of kinship in telugu that identifies with the dravidian equations the concept of dravidian started with a campbell pointing out the kinship terminologies are different from the sanskrit that is how the concept of dravidian born and subsequently caldwell comes and write the comparative um, grammar of the dravidian languages and then morgan believed that kinship could show historical relationship between languages whose vocabularies had changed over time that they were no longer recognizably alike india has been the site of important breakthroughs in the field of linguistic ethnology i am telling you india is a place where the linguistic ethnology was very much indo european languages were understood from the from here when they found the relationship between the sanskrit and latin and greek and then the indo european proto indo european at that time sanskrit was believing that this is a birthplace of the sanskrit whereas those people were telling that the germany was the birthplace the concept of the linguistic tree came and for that indian the western people coming to india helped discoveries of indo european language family and the dravidian language family are important achievements and in the process of this discovery vocabulary of kinship played a role as the part of the larger vocabulary the dravidian system has occupied a place of special importance in the study of kinship both for what louis dumont called the crystal beauty of the terminological structure and because of the mutual entailment of the dravidian rule of marriage mutual entailment mean பொண்ணு கொடுத்து பொண்ணு எடுக்கிறது கொடுக்கல் வாங்கல் சாதாரணமா சொல்லுங்க பொண்ணு கொடுத்து எடுக்கிற பழக்கம் இருக்கா பொண்ணு கொடுத்துக்க பொண்ணு எடுத்துக்கல கொடுத்து வாங்கறதுன்னு சொல்லுவாங்க and then for the for the indo aryan hindi is used as a type case i'll explain that the dravidian system of india and sri lanka gives the grounds to believe that the structure of kinship system may be very enduring and resistance to changes beyond fairly simple transformation call singala any origin they came from orissa side or jharkhand side or they came with the buddhism or a, a, all kind of stories mahavamsa everything and the tamils being there vedis and all all these things but despite all this thing the wedding marriage system has got a huge element of uh, uh, influence anthropology of kinship remains the synchronetic level and does not take deep historical perspective on its object of study the dravidian system shows this is quite wrong many anthropologists uh, they didn't really they dealt it's a evolutionist theory that mean uh, either they start with the, when the human being came out of the cave 
or they use that only as an anthropological kinship system of Toda, kinship system of uh, Irulas, or they like this, either they see as a linguistic aspect or the anthropological aspect or the evolutionary aspect. And there could be an historic connect. That means historic connect means we always talk about 4,000 year, 5,000 year. When you talk about the human uh, existence, we talk about 70,000, 2 lakh year. We are not bothered. My entire investigation, my study, I don't care whether whether in Tamil Nadu, whether the, uh, what you call that animal, uh, where, where the egg of the, uh, in Karur, some people were climbing. Huh? <laughs> not, not you that uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Dinosaur. I was reading in an article, uh, some people were saying that uh, near Karur, uh, dinosaur, <laughs> whether they're near Karur, there was a dinosaur was there or not, I, I hardly bother. It's not bother, part of my botheration. Whether the person who was in Atrambakam, whether what he spoke two lakh year back or one lakh back, I have no proof for it. My clear objective is that in India, the historic India, prehistoric India, proto-historic India, during Indus Valley civilization, spread of civilization, spread of culture, who did what? So that my window is this much. Before that, what happened? Everybody came from Africa. DNA proves that. I am not worried about that. So I am, my thing is that historic point of view. So the conservatism of the Dravidian kinship system is so great. The Dravidian kinship system is very conservative. That one even find the marginal survivals of it among Indian people who do not or probably we should say who no longer speaks, no longer speaks a Dravidian language, speak Dravidian language such as mayor of Saurashtra. Saurashtra is in Gujarat, mayor there is a community in the Western India. These people, it is worth pointing out, lie within the orbit of the ancient Indus civilization, which has often been circulated with the link with the Dravidian language. And that indeed gave the trigger for this presentation. This presentation I started preparing a one year back uh, as the next step of my, my hypothesis of the high west and low east hypothesis, my mentor and guru, Ayurveda Mahadevan, before his demise, that was his last international paper, where he presented, where he acknowledged that this uh, high west, low east uh, hypothesis, the dichotomy, is the basis of that particular decipherment and his understanding that. I'm so grateful to his uh, magnanimous and generosity to acknowledge that way. And then the KVT complex. Then I came with the pot root. Then I talk about the Vani roots. I spoke about the Dravidian Gujarat and Dravidian Maharashtra. Not for nothing, I kept a chapter in JOC. There is a chapter called Dravidian Gujarat. Another chapter called Dravidian Maharashtra. When I put this particular chapter, I know that what is mean. I, at that time itself, I was aware of it, but I was gathering my field studies and collecting data and all this thing. So this is right now I'm coming out with this finding. And that indeed gave the trigger for this presentation. The language of Mer, Gujarati, is of the Indo-Aryan family, but the semantics of their kinship terminology is decidedly Dravidian. That's what Troutman says. In this simple but striking way, Morgans believe in the greater conservatism of the kinship system over grammar and vocabulary has been vindicated. Grammar may fail, vocabulary may fail, the kin system, it continues. It has got a greater validity. And then come, there is a three approach to the kinship study. Mm -hmm. I will briefly mention one is called evolutionism. It is spearheaded by, by people like Morgan. There is something called structuralism. Glad Levi Strauss. These are the international authorities. The evolutionism and structuralism travels in the opposite direction. The evolutionism is talks that there's a universal about it. Whether the tribal again, the tribe lives in the Amazon forest, on African forest, or in the Western Ghats. He will think in the same way. There is an evolutionism from one after another. It is coming. There is a universal factor about it. Whereas, uh, Glady already said that it's about structure. You see that the photo which I kept it. This way, structure. They mean how mother, thai mama kind of structure, structureism. And then he said historicism. It's about the uh, what happened, the Indus Valley and all kind of thing. So this is the way the three type of uh, systems are there. I will go to the next slide. And uh, the Brahui kinship system, the Brahui today is in the Palichistan, in the Afghanistan, Pakistan border, in Palichistan, some part of the eastern Iran, the Brahui language is being spoken. Most of the Brahui people, they are Brahui tribe, but most of them are adapted to the, they are heavily influenced by the surrounding Indo-Aryan languages like uh, Sindhi, 
and uh, so many languages, Iranian, Persian, so many languages. And then many of them converted to Islam. And Islam permits the parallel cousin marriage. And uh, yeah, yes, he is getting married to the uh, brother's brother's uh, child. So it is called parallel cousin. So then, Brahui has long been surrounded by Iranian Indo Aryan languages, Persian language, and then the Iranian group and Punjabi, Sindhi in the Indo Aryan. The contacts with these ethnic groups have influenced Brahui kinship system. Many kinship terms in Brahui, such as those for father, grandfather, or aunt, are borrowings. Brahui father is not Dravidian terminology. Aunt is not Dravidian. But majority of the other terms appear to be Dravidian origin, including those for mother, brother, grandmother, uncle, mother's brother. And then methodologically, the study is based on the theory of semantic shifts developed a research group headed by Anna Zaliznayak, Institute of Linguistics, Moscow. This article is basically in the Russian language. Uh, I could not, I tried to uh, convert into, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a jumbled up. Uh, I use the, uh, because this is easy to understand. I, I gone through that thing. This is, he is producing this. As an argument, methodology thing is a linear type. Kinship reflected the modern Brahu and the bifurcate marriage Dravidian kinship type of which only some semantic traces are found in the language. Look at this particular place. Uh, mother's mother, mother's mother, mother's father. Here is the mother. Mother is called Amma, Luma, I. Mother's brother is called Mama. So here is the terminology. And though they have a pro parallel cousin where I just come, their structure is basically in the linear type and the bifurcative merging, the terminology of written is a Dravidian character. This is a Russian scholar talking about it. So we have to understand, Brahui is a Dravidian language. They are surrounded by Indo-Aryan and Iranian religion, many converted to Islam, and then the tribes are there. And then there is a cross cousin marriage is no longer uh, uh, followed because that, that is a high, heavily will be opposed in that kind of surrounding. So this is the terminology. Then the Brahui kinship, Robert Parkin, he makes that. Let me give an example. In Brahui, Ura means house. That's in Ura is a either house, say ultimately Kudi. Kudi mean is a, it can be a Kudi mean Kudi say Kudil Kudi. And Kudi is a clan. Kudil is a Kudi is a Kudi say is a hatte. Kudi is a clan. And they see is a house and wife. The overall, that is the reason we call housewife, whatever it is. The overall symmetry of terminology, wife's and husband's skin is noteworthy for it conforms with the Dravidian rather than Indic norms, Robert Parkin says. The principal reason for thinking Brahui kinship terminology was once a symmetric prescriptive or bifurcate merging, one remains its membership of the Dravidian language family. However, there is no question of present day terminology being prescriptive. That means prescriptive means what type of wedding you are preferring? That means this automatically you will say Moroponurka, Moropayirka. This is called prescriptive. That means Punnu Kurute so that the property doesn't go, they are living nearby. It is no longer it's a prescriptive because it's an Indo-European language. The structure-wise, there is a sociological contrast between Palachistan and Dravidian South, where there is a preference for the cross message marriage in South India. But in Balochistan, preference is for the patri, patrilineal parallel cousin, like in other Islamic countries, as in many other Islamic regions. The terminology may already be in flux, and introduction of parallel cousin marriage sealed the fact as one which once equated parallel cousin with siblings and their parents with the ego's parents, Robert Parkin. It's a conclusive proof that it was the substratum. Let me give to the next to the another thing, one important thing is that there is a tribal community called Bills. You must have the, you Google for it. In India, the largest tribal of India is a Bill. They live in Rajasthan, Gujarat, some part of Maharashtra, some part of Madhya Pradesh, and then some of them from Rajasthan, Gujarat migrated to Pakistan also. There is a Bills of Pakistan. And their, their population is something around, I understand that 1.8 crore or something like this. It's the largest. Second is the Goons. So that means the largest tribal population of India 
is not speaking is switched over to indo iran indo aryan corrupt language corrupted language mixed language in marathi area they mix the marathi and their terminology in gujarat area they mix with the gujarati in marwari area they mix with the marwari they call that language as a billi because it is being spoken by bills is called billi then the people have written these are the area they live in rajasthan maharashtra thing kairpur district of the upper sin mirpur kas in the pakistan some scholars suggest that the bill is derived from the word will you go to just google for bill you will get a wikipedia page lot of people have made a study the the bill mean will the bill is own terminology i will show that it is for the bow like a cheran's uh, emblem and billu uh, which means the dravidian lexis the term bill is used to refer the various ethnic communities all the ethnic communities in the north india who are the tribals are invariably whether he is actually bill or not invariably they call how they invariably we call the if we use the word like a different kind of nomenclature everybody is called bill and then rajasthan southern parts the language of bill is known as billi it is an indo aryan language look at this map google for bill surprisingly instead of dravidian the language commonly spoken by bills throughout the geographic distribution is billi it's used the word surprisingly and then we need not be surprised bill have lost their language and it happens bill is one tribe in india largest tribe in india in the vicinity of the indus valley civilization who lost their language but the tribal name a toda once i call chera chola pandya 2000 year it survived even now we give the name pandyan then we give a cholan and the terminology is not gone and there is no king but they, it's there maran is there and this kind of terminology there is a killi valavan even now is there nedumaran this is a terminology in maran nindrasir nedumaran it's a san it's a sanga ilakkiya pair it's a, but still it is a current so this terminology is there and you look at this particular map how wide spread then go to the dravidian word bill d e d r 5422 entry from tamil bill billan billavan billon billimai even valimai type billimai binmai malayalam kota thoda kannada kodagu tulu telugu kulami parji gadava gondi konda pengo manda kui kuvi brahui in the indus vicinity it is called bill if brahu in that place it is called bill is called bill and then everybody ethnically they consider that bills as a people are the bill who lost their probably who lost their will to retain their language and started speaking some other language in singalese will is bow you have to always consider i always compare singly is what happens what happens in brahui what happens in tamil that is my area of interest bill of pakistan in the twaidi azam university there is a scholar husain gulam he did a clan identity a deep study as a huge one i printed it i only tell the thing they migrated you know that what that bills of pakistan claim themselves bills in tapparkar of pakistan called ekalaiva of mahabharata as the ekalaiya bill who belong to the nisadas and ancient tribe identified with the bill community they say that we are the ekalaivas even i have written when anita died i wrote a, a poem pudu kavidai and put it in my facebook that uh, how she is the ekalaivan petti and then is the ekalaivan thruna story and all it is a continuous uh, grievance so the bill in pakistan says that we are the our ancestor is a kalaiva imagine look at that particular uh, the politics of the that's what i am telling there can be a politics without a culture but there cannot be a culture without politics that is the deep of it so cultural politics is very deep and the bills do not have a temple mind it they don't have a shrine and they have something called madi which is raised platform made like nadugal deserted area of the village totemic figure made of wood rock or brick sengal kal or marathum seyapatta then they worship they have an ancestor worship where the deity holy person or spirit do have once temporarily nadugal valibadu it is located in that area we will come to that map 
Bill kinship system. I am straight away coming to the, I am not talking about Rajasthan. I'm not talking about Maharashtra. I took from the Pakistan. I'm straight away taking you to Maharashtra. The bill in Maharashtra, K.S. Nair, did an excellent case study in a village called Jamana in Dulia district of Maharashtra in 1969, where mother is called Ya. Ya. Ya yum, Ya yum, Yara hero. Bill. Bill is a villain. And he uses the terminology, I kind of thing. Here is a ya is the mother term. And then the kinship system is cross cousin. That is what you have to keep in mind. He may speak a Billy language, but he gives the cross cousin, give and take. That marriage. Bill kinship terminology and behavior are found to revolve around this concept of marriageability, unmarriageability. Murai ullavan, murai ulladavan. You see that. This terminology in Tamil, mama mean mother's brother. Mother's brother is Thai mama. Then if he, if he one fellow gets married to mother's brother's daughter, he becomes father-in-law. So then he's still called mama. So mama became a mama as a father-in-law. Husband of the father's father's sister. Father, sister say, husband also mama. Atta yude kanavan. Then, suppose this fellow, instead of getting married to his own Thai mama's daughter, he is getting married to somebody else's daughter. But he automatically becomes his mama. After marriage, he will start calling him mama. So, he becomes mama nar. So, then, father, sister. Atta Wife's mother. Atta yi. Atta Husband's mother, Atai. This same kinship for in, in what happens in Bill, the mama is retained. Instead of Atai, they use word term called Pui. But structure-wise, it is totally different from the Hindi or Indo-Aryan structure, where the it is a, a FASI, father's sister, wife's mother, and husband's mother, mother's brother, wife's father, and husband's father. This is where the Bill is proved to be Dravidian. And in so far, mother's brother's wife, father are known as mama. We can say that they have a prescriptive marriage rule in built society. This is what Needham writes in 1969. And alliance theorists have argued that where one gets prescriptive alliance, these terms apply to categories of people who are respectively marriageable or not marriageable. That means Pangali, you cannot get married. And then Mama Macha Murai. That you go to the Kungu area, they are all divided themselves into the Nadu and Kutam and Kani Ur. And then different Kutam, they will say, this Kutam will get married to that Kutam. It is like a marriageability, non-marriageability. They will say, this Kutam fellow is that Kutam fellow is a Pangali Murai. They will not get married. And the A Kutam and the C Kutam are the marriageability, they are the give and take relationship. So this kind of marriageability, not marriageability, his rights and duties are structured around this position, wife giver. And then his mother's brother is a mother's brother in the bill. Uh, in any function, uh, if they are going for a boost or any liquor is served, uh, mama only first gets the first, <laughs> he has to only say the uh, cheers. Mother's brother had an important role. And uh, in the marriage ceremony, mother's brother is offered the liquor first. In the death ceremony, the utensils of the disease go to the mother's brother. So it's a thing I, I don't want to get into that. I want to say that bill, in terms of the terminology for the ethnic term, bill, and mother term, ya, yeah, and wedding marriage system, cross cousin wedding, essentially Dravidian. They may not speak a Dravidian language. Then, mere people of Saurashtra. Those who are of, uh, uh, confirmed with the Gujarat, they will be knowing. These people speak a language eh, which is not a Dravidian. It's an Indo-Aryan language. Wedded through the arranged marriages, however, Kale married a child would only be sent to live with her husband. Cross-cousin marriage was common. While polygamous marriages were rare, only being permitted. The women of this community do not observe female seclusion norms. And the three to nothing. Widow image was not prohibited. Basically, it's a concept. So, this is a kind of menstruation, seclusion, doubles are not followed. They were very far advanced guys. Dowry operates largely in favor of women. Like in Sangam literature, in any tribal community, 
the parisam mean it's only given by the guy to the bride and differing from the typical hindu weddings the ceremony kamdum sarvi involves us word being wed so the mere people structure of the marriage system was cross cousin but they speak indo aryan language they they come to the i put them in the frontier zone okay then i come to the in my journey of civilization book i have mentioned about the case study of the kankai mata temple in gir forest area there is a i i give the kanagi worship how the story follows from the gujarat side and the, these people are poner uh, they are called pot charans their their method is they will go to a chieftain and they will go to tell the family story you are a great guy this guy that guy and all they take a gift from them and they are very very integrity wise near me oracle they will fight for the cause and they are very very great uh, ideologically humanistic people and i have mentioned about uh, that history in the joc the mother goddess are creating birth from the human being by acquiring divine power they say god is not come from heaven because they suddenly finding that uh, boys and girls are born out of the womb of the mother only so they first say that mother is the born with the divine power one of the mother they identify look at it in sangam literature silapadigaram tevarati and then where the pavai and there the women or child girl child itself to worship that is one of the reason the, uh, the people the scholars are saying in in indus valley you don't see the big temple because that the uh, small pavai vilakku or kamachi that pavai today we all say that pavai the marappachi type of thing was worshiped as a symbol and then the mother goddess the living mother goddess are called ai who after death regarded as a goddess she became mata but uh, she is identify one of the lady or women in that particular community identified as the divine mother she is called ai i few days back i requested one of my friend who is a ifs officer indian forest service officer mr karpu swami i would like to thank him and he personally went at my request uh, to take a photograph i wanted uh, because i couldn't get it in the internet uh, ultimately he had worked in gir forest he went to the gir forest and uh, i will give the detail of that i have a photo uh, which i obtained few days back the prime mother goddess of charan is pitori mata the shrine of pitori mata two objects of identity vermilion and stick kungumam and or kambu thoon one of the goddess name is lakshmi ai i wears pink and red sari banyan tree is sacred sign i cross cousin marriage is prescribed marriage of the charan society you would see i is there cross cousin wedding marriage by exchange give bride take bride relationship is preferred female serve special place in their society they prefer female child unlike other indians charan prefer girl child most one girl child is better than there is a proverb in the charan one girl child is better than many notorious male children like one buffalo is much helpful than the many useless goats it is a it is a it is a charan proverb imagine normally we will like a goat so that then then you can eat or something like that mutton chop and all this thing or whatever it is and i'm telling you in india can be i i will always say that the sea knowing people the people who don't know the sea kadalai arindavargal kadalai ariyadavargal i will divide another group culturally those who worshiped and respected buffalo or who degraded buffalo then whether it's an indus valley civilization whether in the historically where the erumai was standing in the indus valley what ultimately happened and the todas love buffalo sangam literature love buffalo in sangam literature the wedding ceremony starts by planting the horn of the buffalo and then the marriage ceremony starts the pengal sumangali pengal they came and do that today if a some follow see the buffalo he will run away he says that a tiya sagunam or keta sagunam and all so that mean we have degraded my book aninade erumai the aninade erumai is a terminology used in sangam literature sangam literature there is something called erumai patu and aigru nuru and then erumai is called annal eru we use the terminology annal for the annal ambedkar annal gandhi edigal but sangam literature say calls the erumai here the buffalo male buffalo as a annal what kind of respect they had so this community which consider that one girl child is better than many notorious male children like one buffalo is much helpful than many useless goats 
there is special cordial relationship with mother's brother mama the relationship with mother's brother is so cordial and sweet like butter oil and molasses that's a, again another proverb the memorial stones again i am telling you nadugal valibadu of the oil oil is got a nadugal mata ji bhagat or the puva priest this is called hamayas like our nadugal the charan have rich and oral tradition through dua songs charan have no god or death god of death or any myth regarding that there is nothing called yaman there is no god of death he says every fellow will die he has got absolutely clarity everyone is mortal rich or poor after death all are equal comfort or distress for the period of life but ends with the death that's all nobody he will never say that uh, you do this one then you will go to paradise if you do this then you go to uh, what is that movie came or uh, movie full garuda purana or some story vikram movie anniyan 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 movie la kattaingala adu maari then there is nothing like uh, that kind of pranam this will happen idhula potu arappanunga that's all this thing nothing happens here for him alladhu enna chootila potu varuthuvainga abindhe alladhu if you go to if you go to paradise ramban urvasi and menaka will be just waiting to receive you so that kind of allurement na if you do smoothing that ramban urvasi a lot of fellows were thinking that menaka will be welcoming them <laughs> so that nothing of that sort this people very clear about it all the fellows okay once you are dead gone you are equal rich or poor so look at it, that ideology survival of charan mainly depend on the buffaloes that mean look at this indus valley buffalo importance buffalo is the only animal which is domesticated in india there is buffalo is the indian buffalo is 100% sudesi there is nothing called a kalappu maadu nu kedai there is nothing kalappu erumai there can be a kalappu cow but there is a, there is no kalappu buffalo and then because it's a domesticated in india it's an absolutely 100% indian so this buffalo they love gir forest even they they even go and then it's fight i think they were showing that it even fights with the lion in gir forest they have special feeling for hills rivers forest animals specifically for their buffaloes they are the buffalo loving people charan always believe achievement of moral human qualities the identity of the charan is the manifestation of dual character bipolar world view of binaries lion and buffalo is a binary benevolent malevolent white and colorful light and dark and so on and this people i sent a friend of mine who went to a place called the ne is a name of this ai woman she is an ai she is from charan community pat charan but she is called ai ai only everybody ai mother mari magamai solra mathila but ai and then her actual name is danu ben veera bai dangjong and then charan gadvi gadvi is a one of the subsect of charan gadvi mean basically fort kotravai kotri adu mari then people say her approximate age is 108 people say maybe or may not be i i can't vow say because this is the field information collected by Uh, one of uh, the ifs officer and also he, his uh, his own subordinate officer just uh, five six days back and she is the most respected woman among the entire charan community they stay in a small groups with their buffalo this is called ness their uh, habitat is called ness the population of this ness village is 53 only seven household and uh, in google map you will find a uh, Uh, kankai mata temple which i had a journey of civilization i dealt with this temple and i talked about the uh, thing and you see that this is a place where this village is located and she is the eye she is the eye she is the living goddess once she died there will be a nadugal will be there automatically she will become mata ji or eye so she will become divine so this is how the uh, thing south india and sri lanka i'll come to that the structure of the single is kindred a reexamination of the dravidian terminology noor alman 1962 he did it single is cross cousin marriage single is may be anything he may be indo aryan he may be buddhist or like that cross cousin marriage i am quoting alman 1962 single is the, the muslims in sri lanka who are the eastern part cross cousin marriage compare it muslims in gulf it do not happen but in the certain part of the muslims say 1962 i do not know i am quoting that book 
ఈస్ట్ కోస్ట్ తమిళ్స్ క్రాస్ కసిన్ మ్యారేజ్ జాఫ్నా తమిళ్స్ క్రాస్ కసిన్ మ్యారేజ్ నాన్ బ్రామిన్ కాస్ట్ ఆఫ్ టాంజు హీ హెస్ డన్ ఎ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ కంపేరింగ్ సౌత్ ఇండియా అండ్ సింగిల్ ఈస్ట్ నైన్టీన్ సిక్స్టీ టూ నాన్ బ్రామిన్ కాస్ట్ ఆఫ్ తంజావూర్ క్రాస్ కసిన్ మ్యారేజ్ తంజావూర్ బ్రామిన్స్ క్రాస్ కసిన్ ఆర్ సిస్టర్స్ డాటర్స్ మ్యారేజ్ then that mean time am ave kalyanam anikirathu that mean the only area the brahmins go for the thai mama wedding or the this kind of cross cousin wedding is only in south india and then kurgs cross cousin marriage thoda cross cousin marriage ira ilavas cross cousin marriage he says terminology all communities utilize dravidian terminologies with small variation in case of tanjur brahmins otherwise the terminology and the marriage system tallies with the single is structure of single is kindred and south indian kindred is a 1962 study then test of the pudding is in science this is the test of pudding somebody did a dna study there is a coal there is a tribe bil and gond this is the largest tribal who lost their language lost their language gond the second largest tribal who speak a dravidian language i have visited their area and then the ancient tribal population supposed to have been mentioned in ramayana one of the great epic this is a citation chaube g cadian a bala s rao genetic affinity of the bil coal and gond mentioned in epic ramayana plus one this is a thing in the this is a study ancestral then they did a uh, dna study in this study we scanned 97000 single nucleotide polymorphisms among three major ancient tribes mentioned in ramayana namely bil coal and gond the results obtained were then compared at the inter and intra population level with the neighboring and other world population using various statistical method our analysis suggested that the genetic architecture of these tribes coal and gond was largely similar to their surrounding tribal and caste population while bil showed closer affinity with the dravidian that is what i call as a test of the pudding is in science bil speaks a billi which is a non aryan bills marriage system so i ya and then uh, and the cross cousin wedding and then it is recognized as a dravidian thing at all now it says that the bill has showed closer affinity with the dravidian than austro asiatic munda population tribes the haplotype based analysis revealed a massive amount of genome sharing among bill coal and gond with other ethnic groups of south asian descendant on the basis of the genetic component sharing among the different population we anticipate their primary founding over the indigenous ancestral south indian which is called asi in the recent time after the david reach and uh, vagish narasimhan and other study there was a lot of uh, uh, thing was going on after rocky gedi and then uh, international study they found a new term called asi ani ancestral uh, ancient south indian ancient north indian ancient ancestral south indian another they called as an aasi when this study was found it was not found ultimately they found them to be i think i think further studies will come i think now the genomic studies so far advanced now future will say answer for it the levi strauss alliance theory elementary semi complex and complex it's basically dravidian system is a, it's not a complex system they say historically unrelated cultures had a rule individuals should marry that mothers brothers daughter kinship abbreviation father sisters daughter so then preferences levi strauss alliance theory, theory again i am telling that concept of preferential marriages or the group of possible spouses for the women in egos group is indeterminate and always open so you say they say cross cousin marriage structurally very simple method this is the other method the western method is a what which is not preferring a cross cousin marriage is called complex structure because you get married to anybody but they only know that who not to get married that goes to the negativity that mean who not to marry prohibition theory whereas the dravidian wedding going by the normal way automatically when you say mama punnu atta pai engum bodu automatically or mari or chemistry avan work out hai so that, sorry and see the dravidian versus indo aryan the study of dravidian kinship thomas stratman again i am comparing dravidian and indo aryan dravidian kinship terms correlate well with the rules of marriage indo aryan scheme is totally different tamil maman is the mother's brother father's sister's husband and spouse father genealogical relationship which are equated by the presumption that every marriage is between cross cousin 
Thus, the mergers of MB is equal to SPF and FZH is equal to SPF followed directly from the genealogical definition of cross cups in marriage. It's like a mathematical formula in fits it. While MB is equal to every is that follows from the presumption that father and mother having married are also cross cousin. That means why it happened, the previous generation also they done a cross cousin, it they continues. And, uh, and when the siblings of one or other cross cousin to the siblings of the others, entire contents of the parent generation are ordered by this principle. Hindu Aryan scheme is different. Hindi mama, almost certainly a cognate of the Tamil word, also means mother's brother. In Hindi also, it's a mother brother, mama mean. But it has a different terms for the father, sister's husband. He is called papa. Spouse, husband. For spouse, uh, spouse, uh, uh, this thing, uh, spouse, father. Yeah, yeah, this thing. Uh, spouse, father is called sasu. Mamuna is called Sasu. And the remaining contents of this generation are differently ordered than in the Tamil. Again, in Hindi, the members of the ego generation, cousins of all kinds are regarded so many species of boy or bahan. Terms which designate one's own brother and sister, cousins are not as in Tamil. Divided into two larger categories of cross and parallel and relatives of marriage are on the whole, just kept distinct from the relatives' blood. These remarks, mutandis, mutandis, apply to the Indo-Orient terminology generally. Then, Dravidian is the, it's a kind of relationship which constrains margin, marriage ability, whether parallel or cross and not the proximity. Whether somebody is very close, you cannot marry. And then Indo-Aryan, in respect of rules of marriage, Indo-Aryan frames this rule from the proximity. Finally, they come to a conclusion. The sharp contrast with the Dravidian and Indo-Aryan kinship system exists at every level. Concept or terms, rules, behavior. At every set of a compensation, it is a two different thing. This is a frontier gens we already discussed. This is a frontier zone. We already saw the map. Contours of Dravidian, you know that Maharashtra, South India, Sri Lanka, all. That is why the researcher earmarked two chapters, Dravidian, Gujarat and Dravidian, Majarat thing. Trotman further says that uh, Indus Valley, evidence concept of extent to Dravidian region to edge of Indus Valley. Uh, Dravidian finally concludes, Trotman declares, in a word, after discussing everything, normative level and the cognitive level, he gives a judgment. In a word, the Dravidian kinship system obliges one to marry a relative. Sondatla Kalyana Mandrangarde is a it's almost a concept. Indo-Aryan obliges one to marry a stranger. That is the reason in the Brahminical wedding, Vaidik wedding, it's something called Kanya Dan, Kanya Danam. Danam once given cannot be taken back. There is no reciprocity. That means I give a daughter, you have to give me a daughter. There is no reciprocity. It's a kanya dana. Once it's a kanya dana is there, nobody, if you're going to give somebody a gift, you don't take the gift back. So he says that there the marrying a stranger is important. And then surprisingly, the Trotman calls this a natural hypothesis. The rule of cross cousin marriage is a Dravidian speaking groups. And though permitted to the southerners as a local custom by the Baudayana, the Brahmins, South, uh, South Brahmins are permitted in Bodhiyana. The presence of Dravidian loadbacks in Doarian, how that is possible without a prolonged encounter interface between Dravidians in Punjab and Gangetic Valley and Rigvedic Indo Aryans. Unless these people intermingled and uh, interacted, these terminologies would not have happened. And then delimitation, I uh, think Brahmins, parts of Odisha, the several of these communities through they speak Indo Aryan languages. In a word, uh, we already discussed. I will compare this. And uh, it's a Tamil, he is a ego, he's a the person. And then he's a Mormon. So mother's brother, father's husband, husband, spouse, father. And then here in the Hindi, and uh, here is a mama, is mother's brother. And uh, father's sister's husband is a Fupa, and uh, spouse, father is Sasu. So that means he's uh, absolutely in the terminology, behavior, the concept. Then I will slightly make it little, make it lighter vein. I think before again get into the serious map, because as I already told that you go to put up with your long talk, because it's going to be a, a big paper, probably it could be a small book also. So I have to capture that for my own uh, interest and uh, capture the document. Uh, this uh, is a kind of uh, in the village song. 
which i think you go on google i will show you just to go on there google thai maman you google in tamil or simply put t h a i m a n thai thai maman you get so many hits in google and then you will say there is something called thai maman quotes like <laughs> like a shakespeare quotes i was the day before yesterday only i was searching for the what they are saying that suddenly i got an offer thai maman quotes then i went to thai maman quotes both in images and the thing and all fellows have given their emotions about thai maman we will show that tangai magal poopeediya vayadikku vandadum thai vittu varisayaga manjal thungumam vettilai paakku pachai olai pachai ola kuchil kattadhu enga area adigadi bharathiraja padathala la they saw in bharathiraja's movie and i am just slightly feeling out in tamil and pattichelai poomalai paathram meladalam vaana vedikaigal if we go to madurai side fellows now put lot of flexi flex boards and poopunida neerattu vila thai maman and all kind of thing so thai maman sirs mandu varandi avan thanga kolusu kondu tharandi thirumanathil thali katti piragu thai maman thirumana ponnukku netri pattam kattuvar pattam kattudal endru urimai kudupadai sollam enga area la after when the marriage is taking place after making all this organize somebody will come marriage and all must have fix they must have even love each other there is no question of anybody going and objecting and stopping marriage but formality keeping at the yaravade ponnude mama side la yaravade irukingala abninga pa ellarum come to pay everybody is keeping quiet edhum aachcha pani iruka objection iruka anga paanga if nobody is going to have objection okay fine nobody is having objection you will declare the person declares he is verifying so after that thai mama only with the garland so thai mama ode sambadathoda that means with the permission of the thai mama the wedding is symbolically taking place even in our area the marriage vandu oru aal vandu kepaaru yarade thai mama varsala edho mama illa murai illa yara irukkila yaro idukku aachayam irukkala na kepaanga so everybody keep quiet this is a very thinking ee paasa malar padathula you must have seen in shivaji movie nadigil vilayadi kodiyil thalai seevi nadanda ilam thendrale வளர் புதிகை மலை தோன்றி மதுரை நகர் கண்டு பொலிந்த தமிழ் மன்றமே மாமன் தங்கை மகளான மங்கை உனக்காக உலகை விலை பேசுவார் உலகே விலை பேசுவார் எங்க ஏரியால இன் அவர் பிளேஸ் திஸ் மூவி வாஸ் பாரதிராஜா மூவி தட் இவர் விஜயகுமார் கிழக்கு சீமையிலே லாட் ஆஃப் மூவிஸ் ஆர் தாய் மாமன் ரெண்டு படம் வந்திருக்கு முதல்ல ஒரு தாய் மாமன் அதுக்கு மேலே ஒரு தாய் மாமன் ஏன்னா மாமன் மகள் இந்த மாதிரிலாம் படம் எல்லாம் எடுத்திருக்காங்க இது வந்து தாய் மாமன் அளப்பறைகள் ஐம் கெலிங் யூ ஐம் நாட் ஐம் ஐ டோன்ட் வாண்ட் டு ஓகே டைலூட் அகைன் ஐம் கோயிங் டு ஐ இட்ஸ் ஓன்லி எ லிட்டில் லைட்டர் பிரேக் அண்ட் ஐ வில் கோ டு தட் இஃப் யூ கோன் சீ யூடியூப் தி விஜயகுமார் டைலாக் about the thai mamanna yaar nanichittu irukada that dialogue i'll tell you there is no parallel anywhere in any language anywhere in the world i tell you i challenge if you produce a document which is comparable with the vijay kumar statement about thai maman no movie no language i'll tell you it's in youtube just go and see you enjoy it it's a long dialogue i'll tell you and this is a thing then this i told you that na thai maman dinam like a mother's day and father's day like that there is a thai maman dinam manmasam mara yam makkalukku vaalthukal nesathudan then this is again dhanush uh, then he say basically some i think silvakumar also some wedding some kaduguthu is taking place and then this is a, one another you see in youtube this boy actually died in a, a accident this lady's brother she wants to do some kind of kaduguthu for the something she wants to do it the fellow died she made a, a statue uh, using the kind of uh, thing and I, i i read it's a fact or not 5 lakh or some cost and all she made a, maybe that may be an exaggeration but he made an exact thing and this fellow uh, thai maman thing she was getting a ear piercing ceremony this again thai maman is coming with a full cart so this is how in tamil nadu it happened then the nursing mother of harappa everybody knows that the harappa uh, nursing mothers then uh, and then goddess whose domain was forest this is how the scholars are writing megargar palobyagi then you will find the kotri kotravai kanamar selvi and all this is a place in paluchistan beyond indus valley there is a place called a hingalaj mata mandir when shiva and parvati uh, even even trivula adal movie also you must have seen shiva was not invited for the function by the 
uh, what do you say, Dakkan, his father. Then sees Parvati is really angry with the father. And then she was insulted. She goes there, he was not invited. So through the other movie also is there. Then he, then, then something in some story says that he committed suicide or something like that. And the Shiva becomes very angry. And then he is basically Rudra Danda and all. And then her body is basically some 52 or 62 parts throughout India. It fell. Some fell in, uh, in, in, in Kamakya. Uh, some fell in, uh, in Orissa. And so many places, different parts are fallen. This is a place, according to the Puranas and the local belief, where the head is fallen. This is sir, one of the most important. I'm telling you, the Singlaj Mata temple is then Rajasthan and uh, in Punjab and other places. It's a very important famous temple. When we went to Rajasthan also, we have been to that temple also. But I'm telling you, this is on a Erimalai. Uh, this is located in the uh, foothills of the Kirtar Mountains, which I always connected to the Indus Valley, Kurunji life. And where there's a uh, people are there, it's a Muslim country now, it's uh, Pakistan. And then they maintain this temple, the uh, thing and all. Then this uh, Devadat Patnayak, he, he has uh, in his blog, he has put it this one. The story goes like this. Ram, Ram after winning Ravana, after killing Ravana, he gets back to Ayodhya. While going back to Ayodhya, he goes to Palichistan. I was asking that while go back to Ayodhya, why anybody should go to Palichistan? Okay, that is a different story. So he goes to Balichistan, and this Hinglaj is the Hinglaj Mata is the most powerful. And that area, her Pusari is the most powerful fellow. Ram goes with his uh, all his entourage. Ram, Lakshman, Sita, and uh, Anuman and other people, all people are going together on the way to Ayodhya. And they being a Chakravati, without taking permission, they climbing up. Then suddenly they find that uh, the Hinglaj comes and uh, fights with uh, thing Ram and make them to retreat. And this say, uh, you go on Google and see that the only story in which uh, Lord Ram is supposed to go walk back. And to she says that Hinglaj says that, no, no negotiation. You go back to where you started. You go come without my permission. This is my domain. He said, Mother God is my domain. Without my Pusari's uh, permission, you cannot come. First, then he said, no, no, now that we have come, no, you go back to the place where you started. So they go back to the place. Now say, only few of you can come. You can come, Lakshman come, and uh, Sita come, all other people should not come. Then these three of them with the difficulty go by walk. They are not getting, they are feeling thirsty. There is no water is coming. And then the Lakshman immediately puts the arrow, thinking that the water will come, nothing comes. And then Sita does something because of Sita is able to bring something like that. Ultimately, then the uh, Dev Devdat Patnaik has put a thing. These three are worshipping that King Laj Mata. You please Google for it. It's a very interesting story. And what I'm trying to say, beyond Indus Valley, in Palichistan, in the Mother Goddess worship, one of the most powerful episode. And then come to the Gangur festival of Rajasthan. As I told you in Sangam literature in Silapadigaram, Devarati, and where the Pavai, the girl child herself is considered to the incarnation. She is the goddess. What she is holding is the goddess, the Pavai. And everybody, look at this bangle. Are you not remembering the dancing girl of Mohan Chodhra? Are you not remembering? And then, and this is the Kankai Mata in Gir Forest, which I had done in my, referred to in my book. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, this thing is in Lothal, in Gujarat. She is the goddess of the sea. The same way in Orissa, there is a temple called Damrai. On the river of river Damra, she is Damra Ai. She is the goddess of the uh, sea. And Kadal Amar Selvi in Sangam literature, only literature where a goddess of the sea is referred to in a classical text. And then this is a Saptasringi, what we call as an Ele Il Kundram. I say it's a place of Nannan. Kunbudu Kunganath Nannan. Ele Il Kundram. Param. I have given in my book all the things in the Dravidian Maharashtra. All the place names refer to Nannan. Kunbudu Kunganath Nannan. Saptasringi means it's a horn, seven horns. Ele Il means seven horns. And then Maharashtra, the temple. This is a Mangaladevi temple of Kerala, Kannaki temple. This is Uthukuli Ayyaman. Okay, finally we come to Ayyaman. And then I go back. I'm telling you it's going to be, let me again warn. I think we are basically recording this is for my own document. You may uh, slightly feel um, already late, but nevertheless, we'll go through it. Uh, now I hope that you are not uh, uncomfortable.
Okay, fine. Okay, Tulhapiyam. Tulhapiyam talks about the what type of marriage. Because I have to deal with the Tulhapiyam and Sangam literature if I have to connect with the Dravidian and Tamil Tulmangal. Because the Sangam literature is the most ancient, extant Tamil literature, Dravidian linguistic family, that is the most ancient. If there is a grammar book which is the most ancient in Dravidian family and in Tamil, that is Tulhapiyam. And Kadal Migri, Ulapada, Piravum, Nadum, Urum, Illum, Pudium, Pirapum, Serapum, Irapanoki, Mots of Wedding. Ama Yena Pudi, Ama Aunde, Better Aunde, Background Day, Ama on the Serapu, I mean the Nadana, Nadana, and Vera Nadan, Pakistan, China, Maria, the Nadana, Pakadur, Wartanadana, or country get It's another village, Isangel. Then second, two type of wedding. Velipada Varadal, Padama Varadal, Endra, Iron the Enbo Varadal are. Only one the Wopana, Yelarg, and Terinji Galian Mandra. Transparent wedding. You know, the Padama Varadal, Odipur, the wooden book. That means without knowledge, they just first get married. Velipada Tane, Karpinu to Opinum, younger Kilanda Mundru Purlaha, Varaya the Pridal Kilavor Kilai. Or they were Pona one day, suppose he fallen in love and moving with her for quite some time. Suddenly, I, I just going abroad. I'm going to Gulf and he cannot go. Varaya the Pridal Kilavor Kilai. He love Pandina Kalyan Mundam. That's been that kind of thing. Even, even there is an Akanan or song where they say, some fellow will tell her, uh, he will say, she moved with her. And suddenly he comes and there's a place called Kallur, where I have mentioned in my book also. The Kallur, there was an incident takes place. In Madurai, the girls are uh, making in Vaigai River, they are taking bath and they put the uproar. This uproar sound is equal to the noise created once upon a time in the Tulbayar Kallur, very famous Kallur, where one fellow loved another girl. And then suddenly he was not willing to marry her. She goes to the Panjait. That means the Natame, the Ulu people. And Aravur. That means the Aranguru Avayam. She goes and tells her, this fellow has cheated me. And then they call him. You tell that, what is the truth? Okay, did you fall in love with her? You were moving around. And then this fellow, no, I don't know her. And then people come, the third party evidence. So I have seen her in the Tinaipunam. I have seen her under the tree. I have seen you in the forest. So then they come to know that this fellow is telling a lie. Then, because he has told a wrong witness and wrong evidence under oath, he was humiliated at that time that the Kallur people were ridiculing and making a noise. The noise, the, when the girls are taking bath in Vaigai, is comparable with that noise. It's a similarly in Sangam literature. Can you imagine? This is a type of wedding. And uh, then uh, it's a thing, Marinda Volukam, Puranda Volukam, Clover Kilai. And again, Makkal Nudaliya, Yama Peru, when they yellow, the uh, Sevilita is going and searching for them. Clanton said, Love carrier, Inbam Purl, and Karpana Padu, Karna Mudu Punara, Kular Kuri Marabin, Kilavan Kilati, Kudai Kuri Marabin or Kudupa Kulva the way. That means marriage ability, unmarriageability. What I told in the, the classical Dravidian kinship terminology, which a Trotman is talking about, if you have a Tulgopium evidence, Kular Kuri Marabu, Kilavan Kilati, Kular Kuri Marabuna, I remember to pay, then he should not go and uh, fall in love with his Chitapa daughter or his Siti's daughter. But he may fall in love with the uh, Atai Punna or something like that. So Kular Kuri Marabu and Kodai Kuru Marabu. Kodupur Indriyam Karanam Unde, Punanduran Poye Kalayana, Kate Kate Bagraya, family Lothuka Matranga. Our Indubu Poya Angla Kalayan Munikai. That's a kind of wooden book, elopement. I have seen all this thing in Odisha among the tribal, Odipuna uh, Panjait, wooden book Panjait, all this Sangam literature and Tolgapiam. I have seen uh, just uh, unfolding before me. I have seen and witnessed it. I used to tell, given information to Tasilda, just keep me informed if any such thing is taking place. I will go and witness like that. I have done that. And Kadal uh, Migiri, then it's a thing. Okay. Then. Okay, now let me come to the empirical evidence in Sangam literature. Yayum, Yayum, Yara Higero. Yendayum, Mundayum, Yemurai Kailir. It's an implicit and explicit. Yanum, Niyum, Yabuli Aridum, Sembula Payal Nir Pola, Anbudai Nenjam, Tam Kalandanabe. It's a very famous Kurundahai. Look at it. Yay, my mother. Yay, your mother. My father, your father. I am not even aware. That means implicitly, close circuit wedding. If it is a, unless it is a kind of the rule of the game, you will not get this kind of song. That means here, even, even he say, uh, in this case, 
she is not related but by telling that we just met in the forest we met in the mountain we fallen with the love with each other we are just marrying i don't even know that what how my mother is related to you or how my father is related to you uh, we are becoming fallen in love with each other implicitly it is mean that the close circuit verdict i will show you that close setting verdict in gond again again immediately i go back to the gond tribe gond tribe mother is called yai yayum yayum yaraki yero in there it is called a cross cousin village where the elopement they are getting married to the within the circuit i have witnessed in bastar in the gond mother is called yayo where mother is called yayo this type of wedding i have witnessed and i have also read many thing about it then marriage system close circuit even evil aimbal patravum evil even pundalai ori vaangunal pariyavum காதல் செவிலியர் தவிர்ப்பவும் தவிராது ஏதில் சிறு சிறு உருப மண்ணோ நல்லை மன்றம்ம பாலே மெல்லியல் துணை மலர் பிணையல் அண்ண இவர் மனம் மகிழ் இயற்கை காட்டியோலை தி இங்கிலீஷ் மீனிங் ஆஃப் இட் இட்ஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் பை வைதேகி ஹெர்பட் ஹி யூஸ் டு புல் ஹெர் ஃபைவ் பார்ட் பிரைடு அஞ்சு பின்னல் போட்ட சட போட்டிருக்கான் எண்ணெயை வைக்காத தலையை வச்சிருந்திருக்கான் அதை போய் மண்டையை போட்டு நோண்டிருக்கான் அண்ட் ரன் அவே ஸ்விட்லி appa they are meeting each other their same village la they are grown up they are brought up together their being foster mothers intervened but could not stop their little battles romba chinna pilla irukumbodhu ava sade pidichi ivan ilithirka ave mandaiye ivan tatti uttirka ivinga rendu per velandirukka sevili thai vandu ivinga pirichi uttu paathalum onnuve panna mudiyala the the foster foster mother intervened but could not stop their little battles they grown up fate you are good indeed you made them happy in union like two delicate flowers woven in garland or malayil irukkuriya irandu malargalai pola avanga vayasanavana thirupi kalyanam mandra level vandutaanga or yosubada or kaalathile ivan rendu perum mooku enga oorla solluvaanga mooku vendikittu nindittu irundha nu solluvaanga if some fellow is telling that you know i have seen you like this so i seen you that ivan avan the sadaya pidichi ilukittu irundha ivan mandai nodikittu irundha ivan rendu per kalyanam mandai it's a close circuit wedding which is given in kurundogai okay then but among us too there are fine men here again in sangam literature it is not that everybody is wedding marrying only attai payan mama payan or the same village or like that i tell you the whole marriage system starts uh, from the tribal peoples or the people any human being fear of incest they are worried about the incest in the tribals of india i have seen travel all over among the austro asiatic driven it is called tapu the most likely the terminology tabu in english came from tapu if there is an incest tahada uravu it is called periya tapu among the tribals of the orissa and then this a tabu they avoid tabu because initial villages are unique clan oru kudi nirvapatta oru kudi within whosoever in that village they will be only pangali annan thambi any fellow meeting and having a sex with her or having getting married it will be tahada uravu that is the reason most of the time the lover will go to another hill another village you will see that pagarpuri iravupuri in tolgapiam sanga ilakkam you will find always the, the the hero is going in the forest which is uh, frequented by the tiger and again manage to go and meet meet her and then iravupuri illaga thullum pagarpuri vand tinaikalam all these concepts are spoken because he comes from outside i have seen in bastar in orissa the boy will always come from the neighboring village they all will meet assemble in something called the uh, gotul there is a dormitory all the youngsters will be there all young females are located in one place there is a madam of the, the, the dormitory and in my view in the tolgapiam sangai lekem sevili is that only there are many people say that all the time the talavi is being helped by the toli what happens to toli's love some people think that that's a great question asked the question answer is very simple when toli falls in love talavi becomes her toli there is nothing called there is a class a difference between toli group and talaver group and all talaver that is the reason nobody's name is given in sangam literature love poems nobody's personal name is mentioned because it's universal so the good little lives there here is a fisherman girl and then this one fellow coming from the town and he is from a rich family and look at the terminology used to kadal mahane i call him as an amul baby kadundur kadundir selvan kadal mahane he comes in a chariot he is from a town he is a very rich fellow 
and he is coming from the minavar kuppam side he goes there and then sees one minavar girl and then he is trying to just uh, just throw hint to her and kind of thing at all then suddenly they realize that nee vandu or amul baby be panakara da you say you are from the ancient town with shops where of tall flags sway they beloved son of a wealthy man owning fast chariots but naanga vande paradavar meenavar the good little lives good little life look at this word i really like this particular thing meenari paradavar magale or siru sal perineer vilayum em siru nal vaalkai look at the axiomoran perum neer vilayul em siru nal vaalkai it's a small life we are a very simple life but it's a very good life we are not unhappy i am happy about what i am the good little lives that we live here from the eels of the big ocean might not be as great as yours you are an amul baby you have got a huge mansion but among us too there are fine men enga allayo nalla payalgala irukanga da apdin solra appa implicit and explicit there is a concept of somebody is getting married from outside also but then she is also finding out that there is a good fellows are among us also so that mean is a sangam literature is giving a very broad spectrum of the what was india was all about so then this is one song i don't want to take a time the ten on mother there is something called anna ipattu in single song where you yaike seppalan mannal yaike vallam kilavan nannan ai parambu anna inge vande annai annai nu sonna amma nu kooprathu vilichol inge vande yai apna thai inge vande ai inda moonu ai kaga i selected this song this yai is a mother this annai amma oh mother kubrade then nannan ai nannan endra chieftain he is an ai ai kudiye serndavan avanude malai parambu nannan ai parambu anna now let us come to that love marriage angry brothers then when there is a falling in love like in our tamil movies the brothers were at that time also they were unhappy and they getting angry so then the marriage the people come to know gossiping okay this fellow and that fellow are fallen in love and then the tholi is telling the sevilithai sevilithai tells the natrai and then natrai vande stolga per solvare munnathin uraikkum sevili natrai uraikkum natrai thannaikkum munnathin uraikkum appdi varu appo na vande hint hint panni ponnu seri illa konjam or mari inge yosittu muttathai paathukittu vittathai paathukittu iruka edho something is happening ingra mari hint kudupa hint kudutavana i will love therinju perudhu அறத்தோடு நின்றேன்னா இவ வந்து ட்ரூத் சொல்லிடா ஏன்னா வேற இடத்துல கல்யாணத்துக்கு முன்னு பொண்ணு பார்த்துட்டு இருக்காங்க சோ அறத்தோடு நின்றேனை கண்டு திறப்பட என் ஐயருக்கு உயித்து உரைத்தால் யாய் என் ஐயர்னா எங்க அப்பா அம்மாவுக்கு அண்ணன் தம்பிக்கு எல்லாம் யாய் சொல்லிட்டா யாயினா தாய் அவரும் தெரி கனை நோக்கி சிலை நோக்கி சிலைனா அந்த ஏரியால வந்து வேல் கம்பு மாதிரி வில் அம்பு எல்லாம் இருக்கு இவங்க வந்து தெரி கனை நோக்கி சிலை நோக்கி கண் சேர்ந்து ஒரு பகல் எல்லாம் உருத்து எழுந்து ஆறி ரொம்ப கோபமாயி கண்ணெல்லாம் செவந்து ஒரு பகல் ஃபுல்லா உட்காந்து புலம்பியிருக்காங்க என்ன அந்த மாதிரி பொண்ணுச்சு இந்த பொண்ணு அப்படின்ட்டு ஒரு பகல் எல்லாம் உறுத்து எழுந்தாரி இருவர் கடைசி ஒரு முடிவு போறாங்க இருவர் கண் குற்றமும் அன்றி சரி வயசு பிள்ளைங்க ஆசைப்பட்டுருச்சு இவ மேலையும் தப்பு இல்ல அவன் மேலையும் தப்பு இல்ல அப்படின்ட்டு தெருமந்து சாய்த்தார் தலை சரி என்ன பண்றது கல்யாணம் பண்ணி வச்சிருவோம் அப்படின்னா அதாவது ஈஸியா ஒத்துக்கிட்டா ஒரு கெத்து கிட்டாது so thus i stood up with the virtue and spoke to mother about your secret union she narrated it efficiently to our father and brother who flew into rage their eyes reddened kannala sevandu poichu as they looked at their bright arrows and looked at their bows their anger abated they cooled off bowed their heads in sorrow and said that the two of you did not commit any mistake ena kaadalikiradha aram gra kaadal nadakkudengiradha solradhukku perda arathodu nitral ரெண்டு பேர் மேல குற்றம் இல்லடா அப்படின்னு முடிவுக்கு வந்துட்டாங்கிறது வாட் மெசேஜ் தமிழ் லிட்ரேச்சர் இஸ் ட்ரைங் டு கிவ் டு தி சொசைட்டி தட்ஸ் வாட் ஐ எம் ட்ரைங் டு அண்டர் ஸ்கோர் அண்ட் தென் ஆங்கிரி பிரதர்ஸ் வி ஆல்ரெடி சே சீஸ் அ வாரியர் அண்ட் அண்ட் அனதர் ஃபெலோ ஹி இஸ் கமிங் இன் தி ரூலர் வி ஹவ் டு சீ தட் மகட் பார் காஞ்சி தெர் இஸ் அ சம்திங் போயம்ஸ் இன் புரோனானூரு தெர் ஆர் டுவெண்டி சாங்ஸ் அண்ட் மகட் பார் காஞ்சி சம்படி இஸ் வேந்தன் தி பிக் கங் இஸ் கமிங் அண்ட் ஆஸ்கிங் ஃபார் தி ஹேண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ ஸ்மால் சீஃப்டன்ஸ் டாட்டர் தே ஆர் ரெஃப்யூசிங் because they don't want to go over the outside marriage that is where the, probably the indo aryan dravidian mix and the tension must have taken place that is my view and says that noble man with a victorious spear one one fellow is asking you ask me whether she is the daughter of anyone other than a warrior 
you ask me ivu vandu or warrior ode ponna alladhu vera yaara nu keta she is she is for warrior and warrior no one else ivula alaga irke ivula kalyanam mandu or satriya danda kalyanam mandu namal solran aanda parambara da nanu adhu mari ivu vandu satriya da nanu appadi mari avan solran she is a warrior for and no one else ivula vera evano kalyanam mandu kudadra abingira since he cannot get her the king starts a great war அவங்க வந்து மாட்டேன் நீ வேணா பெரிய கிங்கா இருக்கலாம்டா எங்க பொண்ணை கொடுக்க முடியாதுன்னு சொல்றேன் மரம்படு சிறுத்தி போல இவ அழகா இருக்கிறது வந்து இந்த ஊருக்கே வினையா போச்சுன்னு ஒரு பாட்டு வரும் மகட்பார் காஞ்சி பாடல் சோ திஸ் இஸ் தி இண்டிகேஷன் தி அவுட் சைட் எலிமெண்ட் வென் தி பிக் எம்பர் ஸ்டார்ட் கமிங் இந் தி மலை நிலக்குடி தலைவர் யூ கீப் இன் மைண்ட் கடையழு வள்ளல் தெர் இஸ் நோ படி இஸ் அ கிரேட் கிங் தெர் இஸ் நேச் நோ சேரா நோ சோலா நோ பாண்டியா நோ படி இஸ் அ மூவ் ஏந்தர் ஆல் தர் ஆர் ஸ்மால் சீப்டன்ஸ் ஆல் ஆர் ஹில் பேஸ்ட் ஃபெலோஸ் தே ஆர் தி மலை நிலக்கல தலைவர்கள் then when when they are coming and they why they want the marriage they want a marriage so that they can subordinate they will create an alliance they will have a say over that area solely they will take over so marriage becomes an important power struggle marriage is used as an instrument for controlling power so then these fellows are resisting it so the resistance trying to take away resulting in war it's called magadpar kanji padalgal this is what probably happened in ancient india where the bill lost their language suddenly new people are coming and they have a marriage system not to marry in the relations but go and take any stranger whereas these fellows are having a marriage system which is basically murai ponnu murai pen this is a dichotomy between indo aryan system and dravidian system and then and then murai maman murai payan murai ponnu it seems preferential marriage inherent rights perceived athai payan thing tamil term for the clan and habitat is one and the same keep it in mind kudi mean sirugudi perungudi it's a wood perungudi there is a place here in oyamar it's a kudi kudi mean clan inda kudi anda kudi in ai kudi mari exceptional case studies of kotai pillaimar in sri vaigundam taluk there is a something called you google for the kotai pillaimar of sri vaigundam there is only 100 individuals they don't marry outside kotai now only few people have walked out you just go and google for it it's a absolutely mud fort endogamous must fort endogamous this is a perfect current classical study and then i am ayathar thayam thayathar i beauty fineness minuteness softness i mean thai ayatharna relatives a, a girl is going to play with a, a group of her friends mean i am ayathar means sondakaranga thai thayathar urimai udaiyavargal ஆய் ஆயம் ஆயத்தார் தாய் தாயம் தாயத்தார் மருமக்கள் தாய முறை எல்லாம் சொல்ற முடியுங்களா then uh, magadpar kanji i already told nigarth mel vanji vendanudu mudugudi look at the word mudugudi it is a well established mudugudi ancient tribe magadpadu anjiya magadpalanum nigarth mel vanda vendanudu avan ponnu ketu varra avan stranger kalyanam pandrava and the king ku vande inda mudugudi vande resist pandra adha dhaan magadpar kanji it's a marriage relationship how it had happened what must have happened in indus valley or post indus harappa it's an indicator of it and then i want to introduce now i this i is a clan there is a mannan i am telling you kalal thudi ai malai tamil podiyil ai kanathu ai ingra onude kaadu ai eyinan eyinan ingra vande avan oru ai kudiya sendave kadumbari kudirai ai eyinan ai kanathu ai eyinan veendi enangayittu ai nannattu anangu udai silambil ellame forest area and hill area veliyan venman ai eyinan avan one of the kadaiyalu vallalgalle end ai ortha nannan ai parambu anna anjal endra ai eyinan ai andiran ortha irukka avan or thalaivan 
இங்குதான் அந்த பாட்டு நான் சொன்ன மாதிரி தான் திருப்புரங்குன்றம் இமயம் நிகர்க்கும் சொன்னதுக்கு ஒரு உதாரணம் சொல்லி பார்த்தீங்கன்னா தென் திசை ஆய்குடி இன்று ஆயின் வட திசை அதுவே வான்தோய் இமயம் வடக்குல பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு பெரிய வானத்தையே டச் பண்ற மாதிரி ஒரு இமயம் மலை இருக்குடா அது மாதிரி தென் திசையில வந்து ஒரு ஆய்குடின்னு ஒரு குரூப் இருக்குடா டிரைபல் குரூப் அந்த ஆய்குடி அந்த சைடு வந்து பூமியை வந்து வடக்குல இருந்து இமயமலை தாங்குதுன்னா அது மாதிரி இந்த ஆய்குடி தெற்கு திசையை தாங்குதுறான்னு ஒருத்தன் சொல்றான் இதுதான் கல்ச்சுரல் பாலிடிக்ஸ் ஒய் ஹி இஸ் டெலிங் விச் ஈக்குவல் டு இமயமலை அண்ட் சோ Nowhere else is a Marudam or a thing and all are the sea shore. Specific, enormous number of elephants at disposal. Expert horse rider. Ayayinan belong to Velir clan. Mind it, Velir migration. In Puranaanur, uh, we, we already discussed about in the many times we have discussed about the Velir migration. Badly injured by the one Migili being instigated by one Nannan. Personality. Ay gifted away his elephants. Great benefactor pattern. Ay is women wearing precious gold jewel. I am a great lover of wild birds. This fellow is a lover of wild birds. Punchline. Vada disai aduve vanto imayam. Ten disai ai kudi indrayin. Piralvadu manno im malar dalai ulage. In north, had it not for Himalayas. In south, if it is not for the ai clan, the world would have gone topsy-turvy. That means some poet compares the Himalaya with this particular ai kudi. And he is only hill chieftain. He is not even emperor. What is the sky touching Himalayas for the north? The eye clan is for the south. This is what the important thing. Now I come to the Pune city. Okay. In Pune city, Pune is in Maharashtra. And I will show you. This is Ai Mata Mandir. A Malini is here. She is a, is a, she a IS officer. She is also from Maharashtra cadre. And is my batch met. And family of that Sri Ai Mata Ji Mandir. ஆய் மாதா மந்திர் ஸ்ரீ ஆய் மாதாஜி மந்திர் தென் சூப்பர் மார்க்கெட் ஆய் மாதா சூப்பர் மார்க்கெட் ஆல் தி சிங் ஆய் மாதா மார்க்கெட் இஃப் யூ சி தென் ஆய் மாதா இன் நாக்பூர் திஸ் விதர்பா ரெஜியன் இன் புனே அண்ட் ஆல் ஆய் மாதா சூப்பர் மார்க்கெட் ஆய் மந்திர் ஆய் மந்திர் ஆய் மந்திர் இட்ஸ் ஆல் காடஸ் இட் இஸ் கால் ஆய் மந்திர் ஸோ தென் மாதா இஸ் டெர்மினாலஜி ஆடட் ஆய் அம்மன் இன் தமிழ்நாடு and then in kungu i have taken only in the kaimatu region and then so many amman koils are there vanni amman koil bangal amman pudu bangal amman sellandi amman malai amman ella kali amman ponnachi amman ella irukke maruda kali amman trika appathal there is little jumbling pudu vengare amman attai amman trikoil ilipili tirichangodu attai amman aai amman trikoil kattanganni aai amman trikoil kallipalam ஆயியம்மன் திருக்கோயில் பள்ளத்தூர் இது மாதிரியே வந்து இந்த காங்கேயம் பகுதியில அப்பத்தால் திருக்கோயில் அப்பத்தால் திருக்கோயில் நசியனூர் அப்பத்தால் திருக்கோயில் கவுண்டச்சிப்பாளையம் அண்ட் தென் அருகரை திஸ் ஆல் ஆத்தால் நல்லாத்தால் ஆயியம்மன் கோயில் இந்தி கொங்குரிஜியன் நவ் ஐம் கமிங் டு தி கோயம்புத்தூர் சைட் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் பிளேஸ் வேர் வி லொக்கேட்டட் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் டெம்பிள் ஆல் யூ சி தட் ஆயியம்மன் டெம்பிள் ஆயியம்மன் டெம்பிள் ஆயம்மன் டெம்பிள் compare this with the maharashtra ai mataji temples and all where the mother goddess the terminology used now i am coming to chennai okay mangade karmari amman all this okay many amman coins are there but this look at this two sri ai mata temple within bracket sirvai samaj another thing one will be in the near airport near airport there is a chennai international airport yes, here sri ai mata ji mandir sirvai samaj my friend he could not stay back he is not well and he is familiar with that he is from rajasthan i spoke to him today morning to i got the background about this temple this are the temple ai temple mata ji temple established by one particular group of people called sirvai and they are from the rajasthan now ai has come back i have been telling that kadanda kaala mattum dhan nammai kadandu kadandu selgirathu from indus valley from sangam literature from kongu finally in the amman ambal area again the ai is coming from the same area rajasthan is i think this is the way we have to understand culture 
then the ai name bearers in tamil nadu current tamil nadu i did some exercise with the electoral uh, thing you can find it in the uh, uh, in the polling station wise you can see that the suffix study i done it for the pari uh, i have done it for many name kannagi some 27000 people in tamil nadu the location i had put a map in um, jvc book karupai in tamil nadu 39100 people are there minimum 18 years plus ramai 23 mari ai 15000 15000 perumai 15640 arai 10900 pavai 19000 pavai that side in also on maharashtra side also pavai that's a thing kupai mukai irulai marudai the total number of names and its variation i suffix 3448 type of individual eyes unique total number of persons with i suffix name 2,88,030. Name with the highest frequency, Karupai, and the top 10 highest frequent names. So then this is the current. Then gender indicators of Sangam literature. I did a study about Sangam literature, how gender equation works out. Look at it in the pie chart. Magal 502, Annai 144, Pen 169, Anang 113. Mahan 72, Tandai 69, Aan 16, Aan Mai 17, Velan 29, Selvi 4, Kotravai 2, Kotri 1, Palayal 1, Yai 64, Nyai 2, Nundai 31, Yendai 55, Thai Thai 79, Pavai 67, Amma 145. You look at it, it is a, it's a, it's a feminine literature, it's a literature which celebrates, like Indus Valley Civilization, where the 10 out of, 8 out of 10, Images found in Indus Valley. A lot of people have written. If you found 10 figurines, 8 is female figurine. Only 2 is a male figurine. Look at the Sangam statistics. So this is how our culture is moved. Then this is the map we created. I and Amma maps of South Asia. Finally, I am coming to this topic. This is the red dot. The red dot is a Dravidian language speaking area. Where we say I, Achi, I, Thai, Yai, Yai, this is the red dot. The blue dot is in Indo Aryan area. The E, I, that is an area, Dardi and Dameli. This is the area, Billy, and then this is a Mer, and this is a Saran, a Gujarat Saran, Pat Saran. This is a Maharashtra. Uh, yeah, this is. You look at this particular map, and the I, this is the Nepal. This is in the as I think, Bangladesh, and then in the Orissa and Bengal. This is an eye map. And then it's a Amma map. This is a thing, it's a red in Dravidian, Indo-Aryan, how this Amma is also getting into Amba, into Sanskrit and Rigvedic area. And look at the particular theme. Then this I want to compare. I'm coming to my old hypothesis. In India, what happens in the scholarship? People consider that uh, they do a disjointed study and bits and pieces. Nobody looks at the larger picture. Okay, Patri, I think Amarnath is here. And uh, I've been further studying in the last about five, six months. I've been um, burning whatever spare time I'm getting out of my office. I'm even now working full time. And then now I'm doing a building a database of all the painted grave area, including the things found, material culture and location, and the black and redware area, and the northern black polished ware area. All put it in. This is a map which is getting further fine-tuned. This is a map I used in JOC. Right now, I am getting a more accurate, including what was found where. If you see the rough map, if you see this is a painted grave area. It is associated with the arrival of the new type of people. This is an entire area. This painted grave never went to eastern India, where they looked down upon the Magadha. The person who is in the Mithila area he will not take bath in the Gangetic the Magadha side of the uh, Ganjari. And then he was looking down upon Magadha people. He was looking down upon the Anga, Vanga, Kalinga, Odra. You should not even go there. This particular thing is called, I call it an Arya Rashtra, where the PGW people were not liking. They were considering this as a kind of almost like aliens. They were also looking these people also. There is an interaction zone. And I'm telling you, there is no place where the painted grave were appeared before the BRW. There are few places where the PGW and BRW overlaps in certain area, but it is always the BRW is in the lower uh, strata and the PGW in subsequent strata. 
there are certain area where the pgw never meet the this area they switch over from the brw area entire eastern uttar pradesh bihar and jharkhand orissa completely brw right now uh, people are holding the journey of civilization now they are going and digging for the brw areas i have been telling them to go and dig like this see here here you find that the brw never met the pgw directly going to the northern painted part where the pgw never came to the south india the pgw never reached the sri lanka this is a brw area then some places like adichanalur some places the north india contacts come the northern painted part, part where comes through the iron age period this is a clear brw potter area port terminus with the island look at this map look at this map we will we will come with your absolute evidence to show this this is a map i got from one mr maganti uh, who is a working in uh, maharashtra he uh, is an archaeologist this map i could not get in the internet i wanted to when i delivered a talk recently about the uh, the concept of the nadugal hero stone uh, uh, the the kind of uh, when i delivered a lecture here uh, through uh, through zoom uh, this talk then i asked this map and finally got it from him this is what called the chamber dome cyst dolmen cyst menhir stone circle and burial megalithic habitation site unclassified megalithic site you will find this in the uh, pakistan this site in the brahu area and balochistan area you have hero stone you, in balochistan area you have the menhir and cyst and uh, and uh, hand circle then you will have it in the rajasthan completely jay salmer and you will see it in the gujarat you will find it maharashtra you will find completely the entire south india you will find it in uh, orissa you will find it jharkhand some part of the bihar in the central india chatisgarh and few location this is an area it will not be found go to this map go to this map and tell me what is exactly this peak brw pottery area and hero stone megalithic area sport terminus with the islands and then brw pottery area then this is a topic a title is not changed there the coastal lands of south asia forget about this title see this title only coastal lands of south asia port terminus with the brw pottery and island look at this particular in india it's a peninsula in india this is the only sea it starts from karachi then you will get to pakistan then this industrial people must have used the karachi side port and lothal port there is already a port thing any two port he used that this area and this area to go to sumeria and mesopotamia and he knows the sea and this fellow knows the sea gujarat in kachi area he knows the sea 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 this is a sea knowing people coastal people and now now look at this map can there be an indus valley civilization without ocean knowing can there be an indus valley civilization without export now look this map megalithic map brw pottery map and oil map to sum up i think i don't know how much time i have to get to sum up a deeper investigation of kinship terms and the kinship system will throw remarkable new lights on the south asian past there is no two way about it and you cannot escape and i am surprised that uh, such an important evidence like kinship terms and kinship system has not been investigated the pottery has been ign invest uh, ignored the pot root has been ignored and then the k and this it came in 1939 and told that please dig in tirunelveli area and madurai area you will find something comparable with the kombe area of gujarat that may take you to the indus valley contemporaneous with the indus valley civilization or maybe slightly later it's 1939 k and this it told in madras university 1904 adichanallur alexander re after that it took another 100 years for the satyamurthy to go there and then kiridi was dug in 2015 and after some time it was stopped again it was started so now look at it as of now we may not have the much needed bilingual key to the decipher the indus script i have been working on the indus script for a few decades but let me tell you confide to you i have never tried to decipher indus valley sign so long as you get a bilingual script nobody is going to accept it because asco purpose there is a murugu 
Murugan is there mentioned in Linda's script. You use as the bangle sign in the thing. He says it's a Muruku, Muruhu, it's Muruhu. Whereas Airavada Mahadevan, he uses that there is a hunched a kind of bone type of thing, yeah, like a Samundi type of one particular uh, Rishi type of thing. He says that he's a Muruhu, Velan, he's a script. So that means two people subscribe to the Dravidian hypothesis of the Indus Valley script, claim that it is a Dravidian using two different signs to arrive at the same name mean, I feel that even if I spend my rest of my life, the whole of 20, last 20 years, I could not have broken the code for the simple reason. When I say, I know that there is an I is written, but how do I prove it? This girl and this uh, mother goddess may be I, but then I know that there is maybe a, that will, word is there, wherever there is a will. There may be a kayal, mean, mean certainly got into Sanskrit, mean is there, Pandian may be there, Chera may be there, but how do I prove? The moment I say that it's a Chera is written, if I suppose I say, I will never say, I will never say, then somebody is going to say, no, no, it is not Chera, it's a Gupta. <laughs> then somebody is going to say that it's a Murugan is written, so somebody is going to say that Parvati is written, or something like Iswara is written. Then how do I go to prove and disprove? So that is the reason. As of now, we may not have the much needed bilingual key to decipher the Indus script, but all is not lost. We have added to it collateral evidence. In the, in the law, there is a primary evidence, secondary evidence, collateral evidence, the preponderance of evidence. And then there is in the criminal law, you have to prove beyond all the reasonable doubt. In the civil case, you have to have the preponderance of evidence. I don't consider Indus Valley civilization as an issue of the criminal matter. I consider it as a civil matter because it's something to do with the culture. So I think in the civil evidence law, it says that preponderance of evidence, I have a strong faith and believe that we have the preponderance of evidence. Collateral evidence to zero on the most probable linguistic affiliation of the authors of the Indus Valley civilization. That is more and more towards the Dravidian hypothesis. Mother terms are not easily borrowed. You don't borrow the mother word because your mother is mother. Father, I tell you, I, I, written, I wrote in one poetry. Parton is the person who was sown by party. Party only knows the pattern. Mother only knows that who is mother, father. Ultimately, this is Thai. If there is an evidence that you, whose, whose womb you came out, Thai word is never borrowed. Mother terms are not easily borrowed or lost are not given up. The Bill tribe must have lost their language and started speaking Billy, but he has not given up his mother term. Mayor may be speaking something else, but he has not given his mother term. The Saran, part Saran of Gujarat must have been in a different environment in Gir Forest. He has not lost his wedding system, marriage system on the terminology. Mother terms are not easily borrowed or lost in casual manner. And the spread of I terms in the orbit of the Indus Valley civilization, notwithstanding the current linguistics affiliations of the specific locations and communities with particular reference to the system of cross commission marriage, the type case of Dravidian cannot be set aside as a coincidence. If somebody is going to say it's a coincidence, they are wrong. To sum up, the cartography of islands being coterminous with the cartographies of BRW Pottery, Pottery Jones, the cartography of the megalithic and hero stone cultural geographies, the cartography of the coastlines of Indian subcontinent may look like an independent data of unconnected fields of inquiry, but actually that is not. The connecting dots are crying for attention. I choose this date, September 20th, with all the responsibility. Had it not fought for a John Marshall's, the audacity to make the announcement about the Indus Valley civilization, we may not be knowing what was our past. I choose this date and this location. I consider the Indus Research Center of Chennai RMRL is the headquarters of the IBC. And from here, I make this announcement. The connecting dots are crying for the attention. Truth can never be subordinate to the methodology. The professors may come and go. The departments can emerge and go. The university may come and police. But your methodologies cannot dictate the truth. And then truth can never be subordinate to the methodology. The actual the search for the truth is not a PhD theory, thesis. It is a search for the truth. Let us keep in mind, IVC was an unknown civilization until 20th September 1924, and Kiradi was merely a hamlet near Kondakai till 2015. So let us dig. I would like to thank 
so many people and so many articles, so many literature. I have been reading for the last two years, which includes the international scholars. You see that how the foreign scholars have contributed. I also would like to mention Sangal Tamil, Uravu Murai Chorkal, Sitra Butran, 2002, Thayamal Aravanan, Uravu Murai Kal, Oraivu, Bhaktavachala Bharadi, Dravida Uravu Murai Cholvalakki Kal, Oraivu, and so many other people, Narajan, Ravi Sangar, Kuvarasamy Raja, Kathleen Karve, George Hart, Vivarius D. Castro, Trotman, Meenakshi Sundaran, T.P., Dumont, Louis, and so many others. I just wanted to put their name on a slide so that I am thankful to them. And look at this girl. Look at this girl. Look at her. This is a casual photo I got it from the internet. Look at the hand, look at the style, look at the bangle. Are you not able to see the? After 2,400 years, and look at the anatomy, look at the posture, look at the ornament. I manne vanakkam. I manne vanakkam. Salute you, motherland. Indus I, Lothal I, I Mahamayi, Ella Reswari, I Var Mahamayi, all these things, this map of the eye. Three things cannot be long hidden, Buddha once said. Three things cannot be long hidden the sun, the moon, the truth. Thank you very much. Yes. I know it was a very long lecture. It was a fantastic evening. Uh, I'm sure people must be, you know, loaded with <laughs> so much of information. Uh, it will take some time to digest. But uh, Mr. Balakrishna, I know it's a very long evening. He will take one or two questions, just two questions, if there are um Please do not comment, do not give any suggestions. Uh, if there are questions, ask a question. Let your question be very short. Related to this subject. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Good evening. One of the best lectures I have heard in 30 years. One of the best lectures I have heard in 30, 40 years. I worked with a lot of Indologists, but you are as good, much better than any Indologist, European Indologist. Uh, thank you. Uh, my, my question is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you talk about uh, cross-cultural, uh, uh, cross-cousin marriage, things like that, you know? So only when, when, when the culture came up, you know? So otherwise, all human beings, men and women, they were like animals, you know. So what was the reason for the class uh, cousin marriage? Whether it did have a uh, social meaning or any scientific uh, meaning for that, uh, that you explain. And if you, if you dig it, uh, if you take P, letter P, in all the world languages, the, fa the father takes P, sometimes F. Do you think if you take that subject and also dig it, it can, it can be an extraordinary research? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your appreciation. Normally, this Indo-European language is called mother-father. Uh, if you say that uh, Latin or Germany, anything, ultimately it will, it will result in uh, patri, pitha, pitur, these kind of words, but not endai, nundai, or kind of uh, terminology, tandai kind of terminology. But there's a lot of universality. And then some scholars found a, what is called Iroquinus, and that uh, the terminology, Dravidian kinship terminology is considered to be the, one of the best uh, scientifically organized need system in the entire world. The comparable with this Dravidian system is, is found sometime even in Amazon, something in the Middle East and something in Africa, but that is about the universal, that's what evolutionist theory. Ultimately, if you see the DNA, everything will go take you back to Africa and similar. But then we are, we are looking at it either evolutionist theory, another is structuralist. Evolutionists say that uh, looking at the universal, then, then you talk about the when the human homo sapiens, when the human, when man came out of the cave, he started.
the, the same kind of thing. Another thing, structuralist, where the cross casein or the parallel casein avoidance, whether you marry a relative or a stranger, is a structuralist uh, marriage rules. Third thing is that uh, very the the historicity that uh, Indus Valley civilization is a Dravidian hypothesis is strongly. Then how a uh, Sanskrit will borrow a word in Rig Veda? Uh, it is not borrowed from the deep south, but it borrowed the borrowing took place in the north. So then how that means the if it is a uh, Indus Valley civilization was a Dravidian civilization, he could not have done it in remote. That means nobody could have promoted a Mohanjadra civilization by staying in Madurai or Chennai. He has to essentially live there. So if he was living there, what is the proof? The proof is only says, uh, the borrowing in the Sanskrit, kinship terminology, mother term. Now, finally, the genealogy and the haplotype. I'm telling you, when we talk about the Aryan, Dravidian, this kind of thing, for heaven's sake, let us not really mistake that with the racial terms. In India, everybody's blood is flowing. There is only little variation in haplot group. Otherwise, we are talking about the linguistic system and cultures and sociology and history. That is the reason my investigation confined to 4,000, 5,000 years, certainly after the advent of agriculture. Before the advent of agriculture, nobody could have written a great emperor in promoting Sangam literature and having a group of poets and all. It would never happen. And he will be hunting and food gathering. So agriculture is the beginning. Father Ramal. No. no questions. All right. So, I could. Yeah, ask the thing. See, cross cousin. Yeah, yeah. You see, the no, no, the, the cross cousin wedding takes place probably uh, to as a system for the avoiding incest. Avoiding incest, how it happened, and also simultaneously need to be in the close vicinity. So two villages are there. In Sangam literature, the hero is always going from one hill to another hill, one nadu to another nadu, not two different countries, two villages. I have seen in Bastar, in Orissa tribal, one particular small habitat, all the fellows will be living, some 20, 30 families, all are considered to be same kudi. That means they will not marry within that particular village. So essentially, it is the village exogamy, clan endogamy. Then subsequently, it becomes the caste endogamy. And so, so exogamy, endogamy is a basically the evolving. So then in the process, what happened? The uh, people say that cross in wedding is one way of retaining the wealth and retaining the work, saving the level. Then, uh, then, then the lady, lady says, Property also not said the same family thing. At the same time, you don't marry the sister brother. So Pangali and then the Tirumanaburai, marriageability, unmarriageability. He decides the cross cussing. Whereas the Indo-Aryan system, you marry a stranger. That is the reason that when then when then is coming and asking a Malay need a Talaiwan that you give your daughter. And he is not willing to give it. So that is the dichotomy and the conflict. Yeah, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think he's been working on this uh, subject for more than six months when we... Uh, at least about a couple of uh, two years back when I was doing GOC, but at least last six months I've been constantly working. At, last, at least a couple of days I've been constantly traveling also. I was not in flow my element in any case, but it has to be done. So because the September 20th, you don't get, uh, you get only once in a year. And this is the 19th year. Next year is 99. 2024 is going to be the century of the industrial civilization. So we are uh, also going to, you know, work on uh, having a statue for John Marshall. We'd like you to join in uh, for that. For the centenary celebrations, I hope we will be successful with that. So thank you once again for, the, uh, for coming and joining us. Uh, and this will be published very soon in the Bulletin of the Indus Research Center. Oh, yeah, I did it a little long talk was that this is the one way of capturing for me to all the materials record for the uh, convert this into a uh, uh, absolute article. The way exactly I did it for the uh, high west, uh, low east uh, dichotomy. Uh, it started with this uh, talk I delivered here. Again, Dravidian red, Dravida Chikapu, 
was a lecture given by me. It became a chapter. Hot fruit was a lecture given by me here uh, in the same place. Again, it became an important hypothesis. I like this KVT complex was the lecture given converted. So since I convert first into English, then to translate in Tamil. So I had to capture the whole gamut. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the patient hearing. Uh, it's, it's equally, you also endured, I have to endure. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks.